Welcome back to the PPL, guys. Currently, we're about to get into match two. I am fine here. No longer in the caster booth, but I wouldn't be anywhere without the encyclopedia big brain himself. Gore. Uh, I thought you were going to say Nick was up here. Oh, <laughs> I was just like, I don't know where he is, but I, I guess he, we got to bring him back in. Well, regardless, guys, it was an amazing match. It was that we had just saw me and Gore really enjoyed it as well as Nick and Chris. Everyone enjoyed watching it. VP versus the Titans themselves, Navi. And now Nick brought up a good point in that interview. They had all, Now they've beaten every top three seed. Mm -hmm. And at, at this point, I would, I would argue that Virtus Pro are – the top team to yeah, beat right for now. Sure, I mean, right. they're they're yeah. the hottest ones, kind of making the run. They with a four-one against NIP yesterday, kind of I think solidified their dominance. And I think that's the biggest thing right now is looking at NIP because you know right. you get four-one yesterday. The other side right. of that story, you you have a little bit more I think pressure on you to perform now. Yeah, and I mean Kanga, unfortunately, even though they did end up fighting against NIP, they did lose their match as well. So now technically we have two teams. It was that have pretty much tasted defeat yesterday. Day, now have to find an opportunity for themselves. NIP especially, I would imagine they were shaken up by that 4-1 yesterday on VP side. It was such a very, it seemed close at first, but then it was just like they started steamrolling. They're a monstrosity yeah. right now. Now NIP, I wonder if this is going to change how it is they play or how they're viewing this upcoming matchup. Uh, that honestly is maybe where my mindset's going to be. They, they are a team that does typically bounce back pretty well. As far as things go for for Nav or for NIP here, and Alex is one of the cornerstones for right. him when it comes down to it. I mean, this guy is not only one of the most flexible, if not at this point maybe the most flexible player I've seen. It's kind of right now I think fighting between him and Bittner for that. But he is so consistent in his level of play. Like yesterday, yeah. it was actually maybe a rare miss from NIP more than anything. Yeah, I mean, you already see it himself. A thousand, over a thousand kills, average damage 83k, KDA 2.6. And in that own right, Alex, Bittner, all of them, NIP is such a force to be reckoned with. But like you had said before, Alex, I would imagine, is one of the cornerstones of NIP. He does such a good job at being aware of where to be at the right time. His damage is not necessarily off the charts, but he knows some stuff when he's playing. Well, again, it's just one of those things specifically from Alex that I think is one of the most impressive players that has kind of come through. And a really good story for him as well. I mean, going from Mouse Sports to, to what we're seeing now on NIP is night and day right. in terms of what we have. I mean, there was a point where he was essentially being memed because he would only ever play Kinesa on Serpent Beach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, in that own right, we already see Bender here as well. Such a dominant player overall. We see him on the pip. He's well known for his pip as well. 94,983 average damage. The Dread Serpent from yesterday, literally this game was a heaven yesterday. Such a good Dread Serpent. The awareness himself. He is known for some good flank damage pip as well. 2.8 KDA. Over a thousand kills in the league overall. This split, I believe, and just he's doing just such a good job. You know, you see him on the Knesset. You see him just in general. I remember having this discussion yesterday too with you and Kresnik about how I was like, Kness, I've never seen this on Frozen Guard before, but there was a time where she was extremely popular yeah. on this map. And I think he showed why snipers can still be prominent on that map. It's not the easiest thing to pull off, right? especially nowadays. Metas have kind of shifted away specifically about, well, at this point, a little over a year ago. They had their scopes tweaked to make it a little more difficult to make them work everywhere because they were working everywhere. But when you get someone, especially on Frozen Guard like that, which is already one of the least pick maps that we have in Phase 2, and you get a champion that is now one of the least picked champions yeah. that you're going to see, and they can make them work. It's just a good combo. Yeah, I mean, NIP, once again, said it before, say it again, say it as many times I need to, a force to be reckoned with. Their loss yesterday does not make them not one of the best teams in the league. Oh, yeah. It's just that VP is looking so strong right now that it's hard to really try and compare in this situation. They, they're a monster. They're building up. Yeah. They're a monster of a team. I mean, if you want to look at it this way, there's been three teams that have beat NIP. Yeah. One one of them just happened to do it twice, but the other two, Navi and VP, have been having just the specific performance that they have to to get those one wins. If it happens for the second time, that's when I think you should open your eyes. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of opening eyes, Kanga being the opponent to NIP's 
match right now. We see Rhino, young Rhino right here, where we're trying to see what he can do. He is well known for being able to play some of these off tanks. This position is that he has is really, really good. We do see it right here on the Atlas 613 kills. KDA 1.5 average damage, 57,000. But I mean, that is to be expected of in itself what an off-tank should be doing. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that, that, that I argue maybe even high for an off-tank as far as things go, or it's just how much damage he's going to take. Of course, he's also one of the ones that will flex around right. for them if they do want to run something like a triple DPS. And those are the things I think that, that are interesting, is having that player that can do that, especially onto a Willow, of mm -hmm. all things. Like, yeah. there's a few champions that we see when you have the triple DPS, like, okay, we're, we're going to throw you on Cassie or, or Leon this time. I'll take the Willow so we can, you know, make sure one of our carries is on it. But being able to have that kind of performance come down from what is still one of your off tanks, technically listed as the main tank, but mm -hmm. because of the way him and Joel's play, they just flip flop every time they want to or need to. Yeah. It's just it's good from Rhino to to make the team have consistency. <laughs> Yeah, and speaking of consistency, Evil Eye, the man himself, well known for his blaster play, well known for the Bomb King, well known for the EV itself. He's a really good player. He knows what it is that he's doing. He knows where he has to be positioned, and he can flex a little bit too. Yeah, but I think the, the caveat you put on there is very appropriate too. Like, he can flex a little bit. Yeah, and that's right, the yeah. thing is a lot of his best champions, I would say he has three that you can get a stellar performance out of him on as long as he's in the zone. And that's always been the, the biggest question mark for me. And, and, you know, we had gotten to talk to Kanga a little coming into this week about the fact that between him and Gera, I mean, th th they were on two of the most winning teams in Paladins right. last year. I mean, he, came, he Evil Eye here is coming from G2, who was number one in NA all but, I believe, the last split of last year. They were able to win themselves a PPL Finals. Like, they, they, they did the works. And now he's on a sixth place team. And, right. you know, like having to explore the dynamic, obviously Kanga being coachless has been causing some issues for them. And so it's interesting to see where Evil Eye is. Because at this point, he kind of wants to prove, like, and we've mentioned this in the past, he had to re qualify for his spot for G2. Right. He wants to prove that he wasn't a weak link then. Right. And so he's not a weak link now. But it's, it's going to be up to, I think, this performance today to maybe indicate like where Kanga is because they've been slowly but surely kind of falling off in phase two. Yeah, I agree with that. Along with the fact that it's not going to be easy going up against one of the top no. seeded teams as Kanga right now. They've got a lot on their plate. Not necessarily this, not necessarily overall, but we do have a lot of power and a lot of power momentum they have to have in order to actually be able to stop NIP. We're going to take a look at the map bands as well, see what's going on. Jaguar Falls, Splitstone Quarry, both respectively for Kanga and NIP. And in return to that, we have Ice Mines and Ascension Peak are both gone. Four maps out of the loop. I'm up? just, I'm just gonna say. So I have a, I have a little spreadsheet mm -hmm. that I, I do to keep track of drafts, maps, mm -hmm. map picks, bands, all, all the works, right? And uh, I have not changed for like three weeks now. The NIP lineup that just says Splitstone Quarry Ascension P, <laughs> and I just think it's it's nice to have that level of consistency in your day to day. I mean, hey, they just don't want to deal with the mass. One map they will have to deal with though is Serpent Beach. That'll be the one for our first game right now. We're getting right into draft. Kanga's on us currently side. So going to try and ban. Of course, we might see a Torvald. We might see an Atlas. We'll see some of the usual suspects unless they're specifically trying to ban out characters they don't want NIP to have. And that's why I'm glad I brought that one up because Mave is the first ban on Kanga's side. And I'm going to throw this one out there. That's weird to me. Really? Because Maeve has not been good for NIP. Like, she has been, if I if I look at this, banned by them most of the time, this phase. Ten times banned. Okay. Uh, they've picked her three times and lost all three games That's that crazy. they've grabbed this Maeve. If there's any team that I think you should be more confident not banning Maeve against, mm -hmm. it would it would have to be NIP. I mean, they're the only ones who just don't seem to have made her click. Maybe there's something that's been going on in scrims and things like that that, that make her frightening, but competitively, they just haven't made her show what we've seen other teams make her show. Right, I agree. Bonker, zooming in the 
the stair, unbreaking, unrelenting. They do decide to go for Torval, gone. Atlas and Makoa are also gone. But the thing is, is that as interesting is that, once again, Khan is still open. He's not as prioritized of a band as some of these guys are, as Torval is, as Atlas is, as Makoa is. And that's going to be something that's going to be really interesting in the upcoming patches, seeing how people treat Torval after this point. Because yeah. of the fact that his 30% is going down to 15%, that's a luminary buff. And mm -hmm. also, Genos can put it on more than one person. Yeah, that's going to be the big difference. But for, for, for now, Bob. he's still, luckily, I guess, for, for whoever's against an IP in yeah. this case, I'm going to say, still locked Come in on, the ban area. Fight. Although, you know, I'm going to say, if you're going to ban Maeve, mm -hmm. honestly, in this kind of draft, it might be worthwhile to, to maybe play around and not ban Torvald, see what sure. you can get. But of course, NIP then can potentially leave like open the Atlas as their second ban and ban something else. So there's a lot of playing around to be had in draft phase when it comes down to your bans. But I like the fact that both of these teams kind of stick true to it just because of how dangerous a game it can be otherwise. Yeah, I agree. They do go for the Barrick Ash. Both of those frontliners locked. Kango, taking into consideration, we might see a potential. They do have the EV locked. They may not feel as un, like as scared as NIP is, so they're opting to go for the Willow and the Healer as well. Genos, <laughs> luminary <laughs> buff for so many different hmm. characters on the team. Whoever it is that Kango decides Early to go back. after this, they've already locked their two frontliners, so they feel no need to rush to get a frontliner, which is yeah. why I believe they have left them open. They're going to leave that to last, and by chance, whatever it is, they feel like the NIP on the flip side, though, might try and go for They might go for a Leon here, maybe, is what I'm imagining. They do go for the Furia, but at the same time, I feel like Leon is, hey, I was correct. Awesome. Anyway, Furia and Leon are both locked. You want to be able to deal with that Willow, want to be able to deal with that Eevee, be able to track the movements it is that they have, Neil. knock them out of the sky when you need them. And I do agree with NIP's lineup so far. I Not like only it. is it really, really good against Eevee Willow, but it also maybe thwarts some plans, or at least attempts to thwart some plans yeah. to go for the triple DPS. I mean, the highlights we were watching before we came into this game were Kanga on Serpent Beach mm -hmm. playing a triple DPS line, the Willow being on Rhino. And so now they're hovering over that Inara, hovering over that Knessa with a lot of potential for it. Of course, they're probably going to burn through bank time just to make sure they have the ultimate decision that they want before they lock things in. But, I mean, this I is pretty essential the to what the they have. I mean, with Barrack Ash being off the board, Inara is really going to be the, the only point tank you can go for that's going to feel confident. Although we have mentioned and noted several times in the past, and it's worth mentioning here, her lack of synergy overall yeah. with Inara, or with Genos. Luckily, since there's no Willow on NIP, since they grabbed her up so fast, it does make it a little easier, I think, for Kanga to, to stay afloat here. Okay, they're going to have to go for the Drogos points. as well. That'll be a lot harder for Kinesa really to stay stationary. If Drogos ever sees her, he can definitely apply the shots that he needs to from his fire spit, from his rocket salvos, whatever it is that that may be at the time to deal with that. Also, it'll be a good, sort of good counter to Anara as well, being able to use that Dragon Punch to clear her off of the points, and she's so slow. The really only thing it is that she can do is pretty much wall Drogos off to make sure that he does not get to her in time but i do like the li whose draft do you like more actually? i think i like nips a little more but it's going to depend on the angles drogos plays at otherwise kness is going to just pop him out of the sky so depending on presumably alex on this drogos where he's playing that angle that'll make the big difference well regardless of whoever it is has the better draft in this case even though i do agree with gora gonna throw it right down to the casters and get us into game one Thank you, boys. A little 3 DPS for Kanga to kick off the day here in Serpent Beach. I have to say, I like it. It's one yep. of my favorite metas, I think, to watch. It's high octane, a lot of people dying, a lot of damage, a lot of ultimates, a lot of fun all around. But it requires a lot of aggression. Yeah, a lot of coordination. Like, a lot of defensive play rotations and all that stuff. I find it interesting that this is kind of becoming Kanga's personality. Yesterday, they brought out a lot of interesting... They went from triple DPS into triple tank, I think, one after the other. Now they're starting with triple DPS again. I find it really, really interesting that they're kind of just going out there with their drafts. You know, they're saying, let's let's just be crazy flexible. Let's bring out things no one's seeing and see if that can give us an advantage. You know, given what I kind of heard from Fasheko, it's kind of making me think this of, like, we didn't really have our identity. We didn't really know how we wanted to play the game in phase one. I kind of feel like Kanga's a little bit there right now as well, where they're they're still kind of searching around. The meta shifts too. Everyone's kind of what's optimal, what's ideal right now with so many characters that can be picked, what should be picked, what is the all overarching goal that we want to achieve here. Because there's not a lot of right and wrong. It's a lot of gray area as we find Diggy Dog. 
Cleaning up first blood here. Chronix quickly answers Diggy's head's on a swivel right now, trying to deal with Evil Eyes. Eevee maybe in a difficult spot here. No sword cooldown for a couple seconds up and over the wall. He'll be just fine for the time being. Love the counterplay from the Drogos around the Knessa. I mean, Alex is just able to find a lot of free spam onto Chronix. And there's enough buildings where he can get great damage onto every other target without really being a threat. Fantastic air shot there by Bully. He wants to go in for this, but I really think Alex has the advantage in this matchup. And yeah, Bully having to sit just there on the ground. So much easier for Alex to find those shots. Uh, and he does. A quick kill on him starting this fight off well for NIP. What makes you say that? The advantage to the Drogos? Uh, spit? It's harder to shoot up than it is to shoot down. Fair enough. That, that's basically all it comes down to. I mean, it's just Drogos has a constant height advantage versus you. Fair enough. 75% for Ninjas in pajamas on the objective. Nice read. As he saw that Eevee coming in, gets the dismount, gets the big hit. Chronix rotating in. 99 to overtime, but as the perpetual toucher Eevee gets out of the objective, she is not going to be able to survive that engagement. Kenga Esports are going to fall here to the back foot. Ninjas and pajamas will have the first offense of the game. It doesn't stop Chronix slowing down the aggression out of Diggy Dog just a little while longer. Again, this is tough. You you know, three DPS, if you're not winning this fight pretty handily, you kind of lose just because you're getting out aggressed on the objective. Yeah, and it's harder for you to retake space than it is to own it once you have it. That's kind of the downside of triple DPS. And Nipper kind of able to just play their game because they just owned that space immediately. Good flank by Alex finding Rhino there. Love this angle for Worm Jets throw goes. This really opened up. As soon as Worm Jets got buffed, this whole side of the map really opened up for teams who decide to pick them. Oh no, Kinesa. Finds a little shot there and sets up Evil Eye. A cute little wall is going to at least delay Diggy Dog from getting what he wants. Looking for the shoulder bash on the Willow. Can't quite find it. She doesn't make it back in a base, though. Bonkar connects a nice little shot from distance as this payload continues its iron march towards the destination. Knockbacks galore. Diggy Dog and Bonkar just stuff. Kanga into their spawn. Full court press in the fullest sense of the word. Nice, easy round, 2-0 for NIP here on Surf Beach. Kanga, I don't know what they can change up. I, they, they need to find a way to take ground really early, but the tanks that NIP have are just so hard, I feel, to burn through if you are running triple DPS. So Alex, again, kind of asserting dominance over Evil Eye there on the right side and just showing that it is a solid counter pick as long as he can avoid the Kinesa. And Kinesa has to take some very split angles, like very distinct angles on this map to not get melted by the Leon coming in from Tenor. Five. So Alex has a lot of time to rotate yeah. and find where he wants to go. That's really the fine balance, and it's almost not ever not that case. Nice little triple negative for you. If Chronix can't find an angle to be involved, then he's essentially just dead for this fight. He's just ineffective. There's so many little line of sights to be aware of to counterbalance. Time and space to just deter that Dragon Punch away from Inara. Bonker finds the first frag. This is it. Like, once you get that one kill, it's like if you just slow it down, at that point, you solidify your man advantage. Nobody else dies. No other trades happen. What do you freaking do as Kanga? You really can't do too much. I mean, hope, hope that one of the tanks kind of overextend. Hope that Gera can find a Void Grip on someone who's dashing away. But Diggy's being pretty careful about that. Only really letting himself die like that when he's going in for his zone and Gera going down there kind of removes that possibility. Evil Eye, great air shot, but the control is still in NIP's hands. Oh, Evil Eye does get that one return kill. Chronic's getting aggressive. He's got to make it happen now. It's a couple of big ones, but overall NIP managed to escape relatively unscathed. And Ice Storm to lock it down. Evil Eye doing his best. Bird is absolutely pumping Bonker, keeping him on his feet. Bonker took a lot of punishment there. He has the support to thank for his life. 96-99, the final tick with no overtime to contest. Kenga Esports fall. Rio, one more conversion, and Circle Beach is done and dusted. And I'd be here just playing so well against Triple DPS. I, I have a feeling they've just seen it a lot in scrims and know exactly how to deal with it. The Drogos, you wouldn't think it's Kinesa. This is the second game in a row. You see Drogos and Kinesa, and the Drogos is just dealing yeah. with it the whole time. You know? Yeah, it's one of those things we talked about, the Dead Zone and Nara sort of interaction. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff on paper that just doesn't end up working that way in practice a lot of times. If, if you get one presence, one you know stray rocket from downtown, you know everyone's got their plan until they get punched in the mouth. So Drogos is looking to obviously punch as many people in the mouth as he possibly can. Not only with the rockets, 
with his ultimate as well. Chronix and Rhino open this one up in favor of Kango. Chronix will find another one. Three for nothing and a little parting gift for Alex as well. Basically clean sweeping NIP. Not a huge deal though. If you're a Nip fan, they need to go home and spend some money anyway. Let's take a look at the item screen and see where they're at. Looking at this, I mean, NIP have the credit advantage. They won both mids, so 600 extra credits in their pockets to kind of get ahead in these red items. Two play, only two players have caught two, caught ones for Gera and Chronix. And Rhino still just on Blast Shield 1. Only one item for him. He's really not able to do much. I mean, Tenor's Leon puts on so much pressure. Any Fae Flight, other than that one he barely got away with, isn't going to do too much. And Bro. can't get away with much if Alex is diving you either. Look at this freight train, just at a moment's notice. I mean, the 0 to 60 speed for NIP is unlike anything else in the league. These guys can really get it going quickly. Gera finds one quick return kill. He's going to do his best to contest from the high ground here. Bonker's not missing any shots, though. Dome shield. Can he survive this one? Diggy Dog's in there with him. They're boxing out. Chronix is falling lower and lower. One more shot from Diggy will do it. Wind up and the pitch. Joel gets a good wall off. That's going to buy a ton of time, but all of his team is just crumbling around him. Oh, he's dancing skirt. on top of his head. We did not need to see that. Inara stuck in the corner. Very low HP. Joel's going down as well. Ice Storm. Actually, Rhino finally having a presence in this fight too. Gets two, but going quickly. Damage Diggy. reduction from the battering ram is just too much. Chronix is going to fall as well, and I think it's an inevitability Diggy at this point. Dog, baby. He just put it down on his old team. My goodness. The fear of God. I didn't even know. I got to just quick say. I didn't even know Inara had legs modeled out under the underneath the skirt. That was funny. That it's was good, funny. Good attention She's to like detail. little chicken legs. <laughs> it's kind of skinny. <laughs> oh, man. A funny one. A funny ending. Diggy Dog with a commanding final fight there. Sponsored by the Dome Shield from Bonker. Knocking people around. Hitting pretty much every shot there. Convincing from NIP in game one. That was a risky Dome Shield, too. I mean, they knew what was going to work out. Bonker was 750, and I think Oss Rhino had max yeah. Blast Flower stack. So if that Dome Shield hadn't gone out exactly when it did, Bonker would be dead, and he would have probably lost the Dome Shield. Close stuff, guys. That's game number one convincingly to NIP. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with game two. Steel Series, the official peripheral provider of the Paladins Premier League. Welcome back, guys, to the PPL NIP actually netting the first win on Serpent Beach there with a very commanding lead as well, 4-0 completely against Kanga. Unfortunately for them, they did lose the first game, but that doesn't mean that they're completely out of the set. Yeah, it's just a, a little bit of a convincing win, though. <laughs> I think that's, that Kanga has to be worried about. That was the map they wanted to go to, is the kind of draft they want to play, and NIP didn't care at right. all that's i think the biggest thing is they played their game and admittedly that's what they talk about in a lot of these scenarios is that they got to play their game and well yeah. that's the scariest nip can be yeah i agree with that as well rhino and really just the rest of kanga struggled a little bit in terms of damage numbers but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's all it is you should look at nip in general fifty three thousand damage on a bonker bidner he actually ended up out damaging both of the of the damages there, Bonker did. But yeah. regardless of that, the slash lines are all looking good. Bender 2, 3, and 11. Alex, 6, 5, and 5. I did really like the Drogos pick when they actually went into Serpent Beach with it. Bird, 3, 2, and 11. Diggy Dog, 9, 3, and 7. 7, and 2 for Bonker. Just positive all around. 
it's one of those things. It's actually really impressive. The slash lines for the front lines looking incredible, but I, I in my eyes, Drogo's this Alex play well, it was impressive from him. There were a lot of moments where he's just being sneaky. Yeah. Right. I mean, like I distinctly remember it was actually uh, you know we were sitting back with production watching the game, hearing a what are you doing, Alex? While he was just <laughs> hovering here, and it was just laying in wait as the prey came to him. Yeah, if you see he immediately gets the kill, pops the Dragon Punch, does manage to net something. Though. It was just an overall good awareness from him. And I did mention it just a little bit, nothing too crazy, but I did talk about the fact how Ness is going to have a little bit of a harder time trying to deal with a few of the other DPSs or individuals on NIP side. We've got a Drogo's breathing down your neck, too. If there's any a time where Drogo just manages to see her with good cover, he's going to hit those rockets just like he did, and he's just going to immediately descend right to where she is and honestly it's just uh i think maybe well ideally for kanga not indicative of how this set is going to go but again that was pretty convincing from an ip so where we go next uh, i mean kanga are gonna have to completely flip the script shattered desert is the map we are opting to go for in that case as well map two i'm gonna be very interesting kanga is gonna have to change a few things around make sure they actually have a draft that's more comfortable nip now going for the mave band Interesting. Yeah, and it's, again, Kanga can play it. Uh, Evil right, Eye yeah. with Maeve is incredibly dangerous. It's just up against an IP that I don't agree with that ban. So having it come through, I think it's going to be just fine right there where it potentially belongs up against Kanga where they have had very prominent games with Maeve. Yeah, and IP all laughs just a little bit all around. The banning is happening two seconds left. They do opt to go for Ash this time, and that's going to be interesting. They won't have the staying power or survivability it is that Ash normally has. So I'm curious as to why the ban. She did make, she was quite annoying during that match at Serpent Beach, but still, I don't think that warrants a complete ban of her unless they don't want somebody to have it. Well, again, it, it kind of goes back to what I was talking about at the beginning of the ban phase last time, where it's just if you ban Maeve, you leave something open, right? If there's theoretically four good bands all the time, if they ban, say, a Cassie, then Atlas, Makoa, Torvald, all still available. If you're Kanga here, in my eyes, the smart thing to do is to leave all three of them open because you are guaranteed two of those three. Okay. Otherwise, you're splitting it 50-50. They can ban Torvald, let uh, presumably Atlas through for NIP, and then they'd get Makoa, which is always pretty solid. But if you oh, go something okay. else, again, you get all three power picks. Now, here's the thing is that NIP has the first choice here. Who they have to go for? More than likely Atlas because of the fact that Atlas is too strong of a frontliner. He has really, really a lot of damage, a lot of utility that most other frontliners don't have. He's a very, very strong pick. Definitely one of the first pick hit. But Kanga, on the flip side of that, might go. They are having the Torvald. It depends, really, who they want to go for after this. The Makoa. I was thinking Makoa, but I didn't quite the know if they really wanted him to be entirely the point presence for them. I don't think there's any world you could ever live in where hey, Makoa Torvald are open and you really don't really pick Makoa really Torvald here. Because like, if they choose anything other than Makoa Torvald, then NIP, NIP get, get yeah. either Atlas Makoa or Atlas Torvald. Or if you are like really, really dense as Kanga, if, if they pick neither, then you get an IP mm -hmm. getting Atlas, Makoa, and Torvald, which is absolutely fine to have all three on a team. Triple Frontline right. can work with those three. And so uh, it very, very, again, there's literally no world where you should ever ignore those two. That's why they get banned out a ton. But now you have to figure out what you want to, to deal with them, which is, I think, the harder part. It's part of the reason they're banned as well. Eric is being hovered for NIP right now. Two tanks already locked on Kanga's side. Atlas, of course, was first picked for NIP. Barrett is being hovered for their point presence in this case as well. Trying to debate, see who it is they're going to try and go for. And the question is, do they pick the damage? No, they go for the support as well, which we I do actually fighters. like because the fact that the flame is such a powerful ultimate when used properly and in the right hands. Plus, I Cherish, when you actually take to that talent, it's going to be a lot to Kindle Soul, add a lot of healing. Plus, a little bonus shield that she can get from some of her cards is going to play a big role in that as well. It's also going to, I, I would say, open up a little bit more room for flexibility in their draft. They don't want to lock in their DPS just yet because they want to know what Kanga might pair with this Torvald. Interesting. And I'm going to be 100%. I don't know if I like the Inara. I don't either. I think they already have the staying power. They already have the bubble. So I don't quite see the reason as to why they might try and go Inara. It might be a little bit too much. I can't see these three triple frontlining. 
I mean, it, I can see it exists. You really only need one DPS to, yeah. to, when you have Torvald enabled and you have Makoa on your team. You, you really only need one on person one who's going to be able to, to blow things out of the water. And so theoretically, that's the, okay, we have our point tank now. We can kind of keep control. And admittedly, I mean, Kresnik's been pointing this out a few times. I think it's worth mentioning. Makoa has kind of been the so far solid counter to the triple front line as of late. But, I mean, if you can't beat them, join them, I guess, because NIP say, cool, if you want to do that, we'll do it too. Right, yeah. Hell. I mean, and I agree with theirs just a little bit more, not only just because of the Atlas, but they've got Khan, they've got the Furia for that inflamed Barrack is there, and with Hunting Party being available for Tyra, that's going to mean a lot too. Now, I can imagine a Maldamba being picked maybe on Kanga's side. I don't think they would want to go for Genos. It's not a good pairing for him to be able to stick that onto Inara, stick that on the Torval or Makoa. They just have too much helping to get burst enough. It's not going to be enough healing. So I can imagine a Maldamba pick here, maybe just a little bit of consideration. Or Ying, actually. Ying would be really good, I feel like, for their team. Yeah, honestly, I actually think Ying would be their best bet because yeah. it's going to be one of the only ones that's still not affected by resilience. Otherwise, resilience is an easy buy here. I mean, Hyper right. Beam's going to knock you back. It's going to help deal, I believe, with the duration of the silence from Torvald. It would help deal with uh, the hook from Makoa. Grover, well, Grover works. I mean, same Grover. reasoning yeah, when yeah. it comes down to it. And up. actually, maybe even better on this map just because there's not many places where you're too far away from Grover. It'll be a lot easier for them to be able to try and get a death ball going too once they get that momentum. They just keep steamrolling, allow Grover to actually be able to pump out that healing since he can do it through walls since he does have that AOE as well. Yeah. I can, I, I, I like that pick as well. I do like it. It's just going to come down to execution at this point. I mean, yeah. if both teams have power picks. How Torvald does, where Wrecker goes, Tyra being, I think, very prominent against tanks. Like, there's a lot of small things that are going to be playing against each other here. And usually in those kind of scenarios, NIP are able to chip at them, turn them into bigger problems, and cause some trouble. So I think they might still have the edge up, but can't have a solid draft. And we'll definitely have to see who could win on Shattered Desert. Take it away, casters. All right, gentlemen. Thank you so much. One of the more interesting drafts I think we've ever seen. I don't know that I have memory of a triple tank versus a triple tank. Plus, because four tanks are always bad. And I've been doing this for a minute, so this is something. This is something special. <laughs> I don't know if I hate it or I uh, love it yet. We'll I, see. I think we're gonna find out pretty quickly, to be honest. And anybody who ever talks about like, oh, why do they always ban four tanks? Well, so we don't have to. Uh, See strategies like what are you this. About to learn today, boy. Come out right now and take I, a seat. If I had to put, if I had to lean towards one triple tank in particular, I mean, I think it has to be an IP. Oh, the absolutely. aggression with the inflame, Three, the mark. Two, there's so much damage boost one. on their side, and yeah, man. Kanga are so damage light, and you don't want to be damage light against triple tank. No, you definitely don't. Oh man, overpower. You have exile as well, just to like. Tip the odds, even even in the case of exile, just for a second. Diggy Dog likes what he sees. It's a little parting gift on the Grover, taking a lot of damage initially, but he softened up the tree. Bittner and Bonker got in there to chop it down, and now Bonker's just going to be able to W key this Torvald down to pieces. My goodness, and I've been pretty good at this triple tank Tyra thing too. So yeah. this is this is kind of their territory. I don't know, man. A scary prospect for sure, but Kanga need to figure out something in terms of just identity. Triple DPS, triple tank, more standard, two, two, one. Whatever it is, they need, to, they need to get to that conclusion sooner rather than later. Yeah, the only way I think I see them taking at least this draft versus draft would be a very early game victory where they win off of Hook into Torvald Nullify. You know, very resilience kind of centric damage there, sure. getting those quick picks like that. That's basically like a kill like that is all they can really rely on here. Now no hook for Alex, so he's going to just be free firing and Rhino has to commit very far to make this happen and I don't oh. think he's going to be able to. There's been a couple shots here, but his team is there to clean it up. Looks like this might be the first Kanga team fight win. Early world win will keep everybody topped off for Kanga. But again, this payload already going the way of NIP. They've headed home, started to spend some credits. Get that nice little 300 bump just for capturing the first payload of the game. Ultimates are starting to arrive for NIP. Crossfire being one of them. Wall, a little bit off the mark. It did manage to separate Alex though. And I, I, these fights are going to be so scrappy because Ooh. no one's going to be willing to die. They're always willing to refight. Quick little burn on Evil Eye there. And Damn. NIP quickly turning. Given what I just saw there, this could be the most impactful exile game 
I think we've ever seen. With, with how low damage Kanga's composition is, Diggy Dog is going to be able to very easily get in there, take his time, pick which targets he wants first, second, third, who's coming out, and it's just like a, a pre-established kill order for NIP right as they're, they're you know, expiring out of their exile back into the field of play. Everyone is there. You saw Alex primed with the grenade launcher, blasting Evil Eye pretty much before he even hit the ground. His character was just like reanimating to his idle position, and he was just gone and turned into dust. Diggy has time to basically pull up a flow chart between these fights. I know, really I love wants it. to. Oh. Hades will be able to do it for him. Oh, excuse me. That Nip doesn't have a coach. Never mind. Whirlwind actually on the card to try to buy a little bit of extra time. There might kill Bird here with that dive, but that was a great Whirlwind. That might end up turning this entire fight. It was a good Whirlwind. Whirlwind's so effective for now. One of the harder are falling off ultimates later. You've got certain things like... Uh, Solar Blessing, that's just so much HPS that it can survive. It can still do something at the Cauterize 3 point. 250 HPS is okay. If you get a little bit of Rejuvenate in there, I think it's, it's alright, but it definitely feels like it's easy to blow up Grover and just cut the healing off at the source once you get a late game caught. He can't Rejuvenate himself either, unfortunately, so the survivability never gets any better. Nip might have actually rushed this a little bit. Bonker does manage to barely survive until the end, but now because of that force, they're going to have to take this fight 4v5. Ooh. Triple Tank is almost just a numbers game sometimes here. Yeah, Bonker is... Excuse me, not Bonker. A little bit out of position there is Chronix. Chronix is Torvald. Never thought I'd be <laughs> saying that. <laughs> Chronix is a flexible player, you know? Yeah, he is. We saw Tenor Torvald earlier. I think that was a little more surprising. Yeah, that we, was we try not to talk about that, though. We can, we can absolutely <laughs> help it. This payload still is going to meet some resistance, I think, here at the end. Nara's just around the river bend from contesting. Overtime is happening. It will expire real quick. Hunting party is going to make sure also Rhino expires real quick. Now it's Anara's turn down onto the objective, but she meets the same fate. Can a hyper beam save the round for Kanga? It doesn't look like it. NIP will get this one pushed on through. And no consolation kill there for Alex's Tyra, but looking comfortable, feeling comfortable. This is something that they've run. They absolutely have in the arsenal, and it's no different today here on Shattered Desert. NIP rocking and rolling with this triple front line. This could turn into a 4 0 pretty quick. Yeah, this counter comp, this triple tank counter comp by NIP is just going to be so tough. To I didn't see it through. coming. They just didn't have, I mean, they left the best triple tank tanks up. I feel like they could have taken, they still had the chance to take the con on Kanga's side, and they just wanted a Nari instead. Right? I think there's an element of. Like, we, we were kind of racking our brains. Has this ever been done before in competitive play? I think when you're going triple front line, having never seen it either as a player, you just don't, maybe it's not at the forefront of your mind, right? It's not something you're thinking they will go to. You're almost just ruling it out. 2-0 start here for NIP. I think I heard the overpower come out, but it will find its connection and it will get the kill on Evil Eye. Rhino next to fall. Potential for a very staggered cleanup. That could cost Kanga a lot. Little quick cancel there on the exile. Torvald on an island. About 10 se seconds staggered from the first couple kills. Should make this a relatively easy breezy capture for NIP. Yeah, great decision, I think, on the overpower early to take out the Leon, because he's She's basically it. all their damage. Yeah, She's that's it. it. <laughs> Torvald damage. I mean, we see him under damaging from the supports in the average match, so not going to do too much. And this crossfire is going to zone everybody out, too. There's going to be no way they can really touch. But actually, it looks like Ooh. someone did manage to do the back. Rhino with the with the Ancient Rage. Yeah, Rhino just kind of WK'd his way on in there. Bird is safe. Seismic crashed out. Torvald's looking at him. But as soon as that stun wears off, Bird goes right back to it. Diggy Dog on Grover's case as well. One more shot will do it. He finds it. Turns his sights onto Makoa. 99, make it 100 NIP. Up 3-0. Game two. Enemy. Looking pretty good, maybe a little bit outdrafted is Kanga. Tenor still doing his damn thing, even if he's on Barrack. 11 and 2, 60k damage. Looking good, feeling good. Crazy how Tenor can simultaneously be one of the best hit scan DPSs and one of the best barracks in the league at the same time. Yeah, I feel like weird. we've never seen him have a bad performance. And I think that just also goes to show how much Nip are willing to practice this composition, right? I mean, they, they look very comfortable on it. And they're willing to throw it out in a bunch of scrims, saying, hey, we're so good at standard, let's make this stuff work. Kanga, they keep oh, pulling out God. these strange drafts. And, I mean, there's not even too much to talk about for that fight. They just yeah. got they just got absolutely got slaughtered there. It Kanga 
they don't even look super comfortable on these strange drafts. I mean, they're pulling out things you don't see a lot, and they don't look like they've practiced it too much. NIP, they're clearly in their comfort zone when they pull out stuff like this. Everybody's looking at Bonker. You, you've got Diggy, and you've got Tenor flanking from the back side of that fight. I mean, it, you're right. It looks maybe it just played out that way by happenstance, right, as we talked about it. But it looked comfortable. It looked planned, well executed. Exile. We'll find Grover. No healer for the next couple of seconds, so it might be a good time to go. Overpower, burn on a Makoa. Pulling him away from Diggy Dog. Probably going to clean that one up a little bit sooner, but it's all splitting hairs at this point as Kanga gets split in half yet again. Three backliners left alone. Overpowered into a bad spot. One by one, they all fall down. Something, something. Tenor's men couldn't put them all back together again. Game two goes the way of NIP in big, big convincing fashion again. Even faster than Serpent Beach. And momentum starts to surmount here for Kanga Esports. Kanga, I, I gotta wonder, are they doing this because they, they just feel like this is the difference maker they have to have? So are they just that not confident in their standard gameplay? I'd love to see them pull it out. I mean, we've, we've seen them. They've beaten NIP on maps like this before. Yeah. Playing standard, I don't think they need to be forcing this kind of style for them. I think they have the ability to do it. They just need to find the confidence in that play. Even though they are so separated in the standings, this has always been one of the better matchups, I think, for Kanga. They both have that sort of crazy wild style, but it's certainly working a little bit better for NIP at the moment. We're going to take a quick little break, and when we're back, we'll have game three. I now, powering the control room for the Paladins Premier League. Welcome back to the PPL, guys. Shattered Desert being the second map it was that had just been played on by both NIP and Kanga, with NIP scraping another 4-0 for a consecutive 8-0 session against yeah. Kanga right now. They're looking really, really dominant. That's uh, yeah, that's one way to word it. I yeah. think it's, it's probably the polite way to say it. There's a, yeah. there's a lot of other things that could describe what happened. My notes were yikes, oof, and yeesh, because <laughs> there was a lot of stuff that just yeah. went really, really wrong for that's, Kanga. Yeah, that's... Very accurate. The <laughs> words of a scholar immediately. We're going to look at the <laughs> post-game sc stats. Post-game stats and see what it is that we have in store for us right now. Evil Eye with 72,000 damage. But at the same time, though, NIP, man, they were just Bittner with a 73. <laughs> Bittner just brushes off his shoulder like 72,000. <laughs> Not even close. Fool. I'm only 100 more than you, but still we have won the game. 13 and 2 and 19. That's the power of Tyra. That's the power of hunting party that is so strong with her right now. With Alex, 12-3 and tw the The slash lines are amazing right now. Yeah, I, uh, I just don't know what can go. Like, I feel like a lot of it came down to that Inara pick not quite doing what they wanted. Yeah. But 12-3, 20, 13-2, and 19, whichever one you really want to choose, it's going to be good. But Bittner was phenomenal, and it really does come down to how much this Barrack is able to do, how much he can command. Yeah. I had kind of described it when we were watching this, you know, backstage, where it's just, this is 100% just three essentially fat DPS characters right. on it, I'd be more than anything. Like, they are dealing damage numbers and keeping them locked down in such a phenomenal manner. And I mean, that, that's an 11.3 for you. 
damage. I mean, literally what else can be said? You saw the slash lines for Bittner. You saw how well he was doing. You saw the, how the rest of NIP were doing. Not only, I was going to say how they adapted, but did they even need to adapt? They literally ran the game both times, 8-0 consecutively against Kanga. I just think that I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to say something a little bit controversial. Just, just, just a tiny bit. I think NIP are good at Paladins. I don't know, dude. That's... You're standing on a pretty thin branch right, out there. Right. Fun. I don't know. It you're right. Might might collapse. No, I, I yeah. They're uh, yeah. <laughs> they're really good at the game. Yeah. And that's why it's been astounding watching teams like VP come in and win. Teams like Navi cause them trouble. Envy right. cause them trouble. Because that's that's where the interesting is. Oh boy. The interesting thing has been for them. But uh, whew, well, hey, we get we get We're graced back. by Fish Market twice in a day. Yes, we do. The third map, game three, is ending up on Fish Market now. You put it perfectly when we were interviewing the winners, VP. Fish Market is where dreams go to die. This is yeah. a very unfortunate map to be on right now currently. Torvald is banned first, which Kanga won't make that mistake again of letting him through that time. I'm trying to think of how many teams I've seen pick Fish Market and control Fish Market. And the, and the only one that I've seen do consistently has to be Envy. Like they, They've yeah. got it figured out right now, and... I think other teams see it as maybe a saving grace, but Fish Market's not a forgiving map for Kanga either. I mean, they yeah. I think they the, the last time they picked it was against Envy, which was a bad idea then, still maybe a bad idea now against NIP because much like Jag Falls, anything can be played here. And I think NIP with kind of less restrictions on them makes them even more deadly. Yeah, I agree with that. They opt to ban, for, ban the Inara. Make sure they don't have a little bit of that staying power. They lock Barrack first, but NIP not only hovering, but they're Come definitely on, going to choose Khan, Ash as their two frontliners. Now, pretty much Kanga has whatever time it is they feel like that they would want, <laughs> whatever tank it is they will want to get it. In my case, the only ones that are pretty much left are Ruckus, Fernando, and if you're feeling really brave, Terminus. Well, let's let's look into the past to see if we can look into the future. Barrick, Khan, and Ash were the first, or were the ones that were picked throughout all of this. Torvald and Noah, uh, Torvald and Nara, Atlas, Makoa were the ones that were banned during the last set on Fish the Market. Next time you see and if it weren't for that pesky run. Leon showing up right there, they could have been par for the course. If they had gone Maeve and Eevee instead, I mean, it, it was almost writing itself to be the exact same right. thing we just saw out of Navi and VP. This time they're going to switch it around, but I mean, that opens the door. I mean, NIP could potentially take some notes from VP and please don't lock that in before I finish the sentence. They could <laughs> run an IO if they wanted to. Well, Gore, it seems like they're hovering Fury right now. They do yeah, actually manage to lock it in, Maeve. Here I am trying to have fun, <laughs> live my life. Hey man, I said yesterday I was like on Jack Falls. I was like, these guys could pick Moji and Dave's like, no. No. And yeah, I'm Dave like, will do that to you sometimes. And I'm like, you know what, Dave, you're correct. But I want to have fun. I want to have a good time. So, therefore, I'm going to believe in my heart they're going to pick Moji. They didn't, unfortunately. But Fury of Maeve are locked in on the side of NIP. Kanga with their last two remaining picks here are really considering what they could kind of go for. I'm I'm sort of seeing the Fernando maybe Ruckus. They don't I, – I, I'm having a hard time trying to figure out what they might try and go for. I mean, this honestly, I, I skip any any other front line. You don't you don't pick anyone up. It's just going to be triple DPS. They they have the lineup for it. They it's the same thing. It's very very solid on fish market. Mm. So Leon, Cassie, Willow, a little more consistency I think sprinkled into this than what we saw out of Navi. Yeah. But you know, it, it's that that's that's the way to play fish market. That's kind of like the on paper like when you get the handbook mm -hmm. for what do you do on fish market. This is one of the maybe few pictures of a draft that you're going to kind of go for. Exactly. Willow is there. They are sticking a little bit. They do actually lock it, which I do agree with. I do like the fact that they want the Willow, the dead zone, to be able to do what it is that they need to. Cassie is locked in last on Kanga's side as well. And IP hovering, really thinking what they're trying to go for here in terms of their last pick. Uh, honestly, could be anything. Probably DPS, something to match the Maeve. I mean, if they really want, they could maybe go Maeve, EV and try to double flank and cause a lot of pressure. But Leon's yeah. going to be good against those flanks, so you might want to not not want to lean too heavily into that. Right. It's maybe something to, to help counter out Willow. That would be on my mind, something to help deal with her and maybe knock her out of the sky somewhat consistently. I am going to say Drogos could be on the table, but I haven't seen a lot of Drogos on this map, so that kind of inclines me to turn away from that decision. 
And IP, I mean, again, less restrictions means they can kind of play the field. Any champion, every champion, I believe, is on the, the list that they could run. They just have to kind of play into potential counters as for them and against them. Yeah, I mean, we've seen the Maeve Eevee be brought out before on Fish Market. Literally, last set was really strong. Kinesa, though, I do sort of agree with this. I do Try like the fact roll. that she'll be able to control high ground a lot. Maeve being able to apply pressure on that flank. Kinesa being able to do a lot of damage into triple DPS is going to be hard for Kanga really to respond because of the Furia as well. When that Inflame actually pops, is going to be really problematic, especially if she opts to go for steady aim. Yeah, honestly, she's going to be pretty solid. The The biggest issue does come into how consistently are you able to keep your positioning right. and, and hit your shots, but when it comes down to it, there's no flanks to pressure you out. Right, exactly. Ideally, in this scenario, you're actually the safest as a sniper. You're going to be boxing maybe Leon, Cassie, you might have to keep an eye out for Cassie going onto a flank route, but you should have very consistent shots, which means right. very consistent damage. All right, I agree with that. Game three about to be in the books. We're going to throw it right to the casters to take us in. Thank you so much, boys. Despite seeing a lot of Strix today, they take their time with that last pick, and NIP will lock in Kinesa for Fish Market. Personal preference? I, I think so. Also, the ability to, to rotate from spawn to docks. Kinesa's, a lot of them will take that sideline to the right of where the camera just was yep. a second yep. ago to watch the dock side, and as soon as they realize they're not getting anything done from over there, they can blink in and, ah, uh, yes, of course. I, I think if any player would, a man play, of culture. would play Ego Eye, it would be Tenor, because you really got to be feeling yourself to, to think you'll get more value out of Eagle Eye than Steady Aim. Yeah. Five. I mean, Four, he is three, good. Two, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> News to me. Yeah, no, I think I actually think Tenor prefs Strix, but I think anytime I see somebody pick Kinesa, it's just rotation, right? Yeah. I mean, yes, you have that cool DR thing, but other than that, and, and stealth opening shot potential, but rotation, rotation, rotation. That's what Kinesa's all about. That's the biggest thing she's got over Strix, objectively speaking. 33% early on the objective for Kanga, speaking of. As everybody just kind of looks for their position. Ego eye, so far so good. First one cracked home on the barrack. Probably his easiest target to find that. If he's looking specifically to burn out the barrack, then it's a great choice because barrack is basically ahead with feet. Yep. Uh, it's very easy to find those confirmed shots. And that 2100 rings true. I mean, that's a lot of damage for a barrack to deal with, especially Ooh. if you catch him between bowling ball uses. I mean, that's going to burn him to more than half. But Kanga finding the first kill here. I think like they want to keep it going. Ooh, they'll find the second as well. Nicely done. Rhino low to high. Creeps up onto Alex. Now he's hunting bird. <laughs> Just out of line of sight. Ideal scenario here. If he hit that presence, that was a kill onto the support. But it doesn't really matter too much at this juncture because Kanga were on the objective early. They stayed on it all the way from beginning, middle to end, and they will grab the first payload as a result relatively quickly as well. Just over two minutes on the clock when they get it done. Wasting very little time. No ultimates charged either, despite some quick chargers in the game. Kanga knew exactly what they were going for. Got exactly to where they wanted to be. They capped until the cows came home. First point in the set for them, too. So it's got to be a nice flip of momentum. You know, if they had lost this first one on another 3 1 1 draft, it would be rough. <laughs> Interesting boop into the Damn. fire strike. Cool little combo, unfortunately, not able to be cleaned up. And Diggy trying to make room, but I think the damage from the rest of Kanga was just enough to stop them. Two picks to, to Kanga. He definitely made some room. It's what can Alex do with it at this point? It's a five for one. Can't exactly call that one worth. Jaguar Falls yesterday, NIP, despite being down 3-1 of Virtus Pro, never played like they were down, though. That's the thing, is that NIP will continue to play as if they are dominating you no matter what, no matter the cost. That is how they want to play. That's what's been successful for them early on. Chronix is finding success, though. Kanga all over the board is finding success, too. Three already found for them. Make it four, make it five, four. Nothing. No ultimates. No nothing. Kanga get it done very, very efficiently. 
that last point is so tough to hold, I think. Especially against triple DPS. When they have those sight lights on the side, when your Knessa can't see multiple at the same time, so he can only really suppress one lane while the other ones are free firing on your tanks. It's so hard for a tank to survive there. It's it's almost impossible, especially with that blast flower damage coming in from Evil Eye. So good position by Kango, but NIP I think have all of their ultimates, so they have the way to execute here. They could do a midnight to assert dominance. They have a few tools, and I think they'll probably have a plan going in. I expect to see a very fast execution. Four, Let's see how it goes, three, midnight. Two, Actual six and up. One. Probably just going to be played pretty much into scout this whole game, I imagine. If I play Cassian to me, I, I sit on yeah. that. Or Shaw. Especially since now it also it cleanses so it from you. <laughs> Once the, now when you use it as Cassie, not only does your team get to see everybody, but you just don't have the midnight as a problem. Yeah. More mid-focus play from NIP this time too, so they don't want to give up that free cap time. They know why they couldn't refight that. They're going, focusing the right targets. Nicely positioned in flame as well to, I think, get everybody involved. Yeah, even Bonker got the wings all the way across the way. Dome shield is out from Kanga. Comeback mechanic enabled for NIP. Diggy Dog, where he at? He in the back line, poking out Leon, buying some time space. That void grip just felt like it lasted forever. And they will be able to get a return kill for it. One for one. Garapines, two from distance, nicely red. Overpower is going to cost the life of Joel's ripping him off of the objective, but there's so many people still alive from Kanga that they just counter-rotated out and continue to cap. Perfect call out by Gera, but since now the tank got overpowered, no one on Kanga can really cap. And I'd be smartly keeping focus up there, but Alex just got a little bit too forward in mid, so spawners from Kanga will come in and start getting that cap pressure again. And I'd be have to find a pick and quickly, but this headhunter might slow things down for them. Tanner looking for it, no dome shield. The barricade goes out. Three people huddle in the corner for NIP by the docks. Bonker working his way in because he knows he has to touch, but he knows he's going to die for it. Diggy Dog trying to zone out. Now he needs to go touch. It's getting a little bit messy. Two people touch at the same time. Miscoordinated by NIP, and it looks like Kanga will just come away with it again. 4-0, 4-0, and now Kanga could just turn it around and 4-0 right back. Very fast momentum swap from Kanga. I mean, their 3-1-1 their one, one drafts were not working out earlier, but they really figured it out, I think, for Fish. This is a map where you used to be able to play quad DPS, so obviously it's going to be a strong pick here. Tenor, though, strong positioning here on the side, locking down the cart, making it very difficult for Gary to get any cap time. And I'd be actually, they're engaging. Diggy's actually very far in the back line with a full HP bar, so we'll see how they try to find picks here. If he can push people out onto the docks, then it could give Tenor a line of sight. Bird finds the first frag on the Rhino. People are starting to get corralled, pushed towards the dock. I think Diggy Dog's dive is working because he set up Tenor. At least this feels practice and poofed into dust. Tenor finds a big old headshot onto Joel Bird, cleans up Evil Eye. Alex even put his foot down on Gera. Doesn't feel like, I don't know, there's just something missing here from NIP in these, in these mid fights. Maybe a little bit too spread out. I mean, Diggy Dog dove very deeply. I think he got disengaged out of his ultimate and then void gripped up and away yeah. from it. Pretty frustrating way to go, if you ask me. But as Resilience comes online, he's going to be tougher and tougher to stop. I think they just need to find a... They need to be a little more patient. They need to find their opportunities instead of forcing them. Because they're playing around Tenor's POVs really well. Uh, Tenor, oh, barely, unfortunately, yeah. barely managing to miss that shot on the Cassie. Everybody else in Kanga... Ka Okay. I think he was trying uh, He was trying to blink off the map. Yeah. And because it went off the map, it didn't let him go. Uh, it took me a second to figure out what happened there exactly. But Tenor does get cleaned up after stalling them out a little bit more. So now, Kanga need to take positioning that they can find and deny the angles from NIP. They need to have this angle control and surround to make the triple DPS work in this push. Well, hopefully Gera doesn't just find another double time in space. He's got it ready to roll. People are going to be forced to huddle around tree trunks in roughly time and space shaped places. That's the real threat here. Dome Shield is also ready to go. Fae Flight is ready to go. But with Tenor alive, Headhunter at the mark. Can you really push over confidently, staying out of his line of sight, making sure that he doesn't give this one up for free? Evil Eye is still finding good value from his Fae Flight. Diggy also staying a little bit too forward. His dash out got blocked. so. Killed there, oh. but perfect timing. Wow. Perfect timing on that death. No one has a chance to come into trade, and that's you're so hard. You're kidding me. I always talk about how, as a point tank, you have to say you're going to die before you die. 
That is not on Joel's. I yeah. don't think that's on Joel's at all. I mean, he he literally hundred to zero. What do you what do you do? Got evaporated at that point. Yeah. I mean, so talk to us a little bit. Like break down what happened there exactly. Uh, Joel's done. Uh, sure. uh, what, the fave light? Like how that lines up with the overtime not happening. Like why if, is that such perfect timing? If at zero, dead zero, all that matters is that you are touching the point exactly when the timer, that last zero runs out. So because Joel died, basically that frame yep. that the timer swapped over, there's no chance. You have to be on it in that exact moment. There's some other games where you can get like a grace period where you touch it at yeah. five, back up. Then, But in Paladins, it is purely that last moment that is the most important. That's why it's not it's hard to not rush it sometimes. If you go there a little bit too early and then you die, you didn't get the one millisecond that mattered. A binary check. Are you here as the timer hits zero? The answer is no, so the round ends. Simple as that. Comeback mechanics still enabled for NIP. Early objective capture for them. They're going to get a nice little lead starting to build here. Unless something happens for Kanga, this lead is going to turn into something Almost insurmountable for the first time. It feels like, Kresnik, they did let the engagement come to them a little bit. Whack, what they did was they kind of used Headhunter as a zoning tool almost. They headhunted really early, and everyone in Kanga is scared of tenor, of tenor, as you should be, and they backed up and gave them all this ground and kind of corralled them into the corner. That's what let this happen. But now oh, he's oh. not getting cap time, so... Kanga have a chance to refight this, but that pick on a needle eye is going to make it very hard. Yeah, still focused on winning the fight. Shots here need to be good. One on to Barrick, looking for the second overpower. Did it get consumed? It kind of did. It's back to 30%, yeah. so it's as if Khan missed. So he gets his refund charge, looking for the headshot. You can really tell he's aiming for it. Eagle eye <laughs> is paying off. I love the name for that, by the way. I hadn't heard that yet. That's good stuff. That's good work by you, brother. He is going to get these long distance dismounts here. Comeback mechanic, quick cap, and NIP are off to the races. Yeah, that start of the mid was really strong. And NIP, I really wish they had capped a little bit sooner, but it's really safe. They waited, like I said, and I think they found the opportunity that they needed. Tenor's head hunter to start was great. Already has it charged again if they want to snowball here a little Ooh. bit. So dangerous for Joel's to peak. He needs to start getting Haven or something at this point, or rushing it maybe, because Barracks Cauterize and Ricker isn't that great, but he needs to survive. So you said a uh, walking head with feet, and it kind of yes. that's how I used to draw people when I was in preschool, and I feel like it just it's made me think of that. I, little did I know I was concepting the hitbox for Barrick, and uh, he's definitely felt the pain of this talent selection here. It used to be 50% damage amp, a much more difficult prospect for Barrick to deal with. Comboed from distance, though. Chronix is on, on his case, rolling into the pyre strike. At least slow down the approach a little bit. Still plenty of time here for NIP to get their feet under them. And they still have big go buttons like Overpower, like Midnight, Assert Dominance, and Flame. Man, when they get poised on the top of that hill, it's going to be tough to stop them. But do you see them getting too aggressive just to get to the 3-3 spot? NIP, I wouldn't be surprised to see them commit ultimates. Maybe Midnight just to force out the scout so they can maybe have a better final push. I could see that going in, but if they just send their tanks in and have a good enough collapse, they won't need to do it. And they're used to sending their tanks in to feed. I mean, it's NIP. They love their super aggressive tank play. So I wouldn't be shocked just to see a very deep Ash commitment. And I think they're going to do it soon, so they might be able to have another fight too. Oof. The dagger's connecting, forcing Cassie back for the time being. She's a primary tank deterrent up there. Kind of aggressive, though. If Diggy gets a cheeky little angle here, this could be the opportunity to go. 690 HP. Tenor needs some heals. He'll get it. Rotates in now alongside Alex. If Cassie peeks again, she could be in trouble. Evil Eye, first pick onto Diggy Dog. The hill's starting to be stormed, but Kanga is holding strong. Two for one, three for one so far. Respawns so far in advantage of Kanga Esports. They'll be able to reinforce this fight. Multitudes quicker than NIP could, so even trades will not work for the offense. Because of the timing of that push, too, they, now they do have a refight. Joel's knocked a little bit low, and that Genos heal won't be able to bring him up quite as fast as they need to. Getting even lower, so they have another fight here. I wouldn't be shocked to see an Inflame coming in, but probably not now that Alex has gone down. Diggy still wants to go for this, though. Overtime. Slow and steady, perhaps winning the race, not spending anything for it what I like to call the old college try. They just kind of threw themselves at it. Maybe something goes their way. If you get it, cool. If not, cool. We're, we're going. We're, we kind of didn't have the advantage anyway at the, uh, at the onset of this game. So the more time I think NIP get to talk and figure out what they want to be doing, changing, adjusting, 
while not putting themselves at a disadvantage by spending everything to get to three and three. I think you're looking at what I'm looking at too. Yeah, Diggy Dog. I mean, he's making room, but it's you die real quick. Is actually, I'm curious. Does he have Vanguard in his build? Could I see the Ashload just to see if he has that discreet moment of survivability once he goes in? He does at three, so he has a chance to live when he goes in, but. It's clearly not enough to help him. I mean, 24% DR, it only lasts for two seconds. He's still getting burnt down immediately from that double backline will. I mean, that, there's a reason those are the three premier backline damages. Yep. They hurt. They definitely hurt, hurt man. I have all types of damage scaling as well, despite Diggy being pretty healthy. But I like that it is. He, he's probably not a guy that's... He gets emotional, but I don't think it's going to let him stop him from doing his thing and then doing what he needs to do. Cool rotation here. I actually get to see Tenor use the docks on Fish Market for once ever. No! Chronix catches him with one, does him dirty with the disengage down by the docks. You'll love to see that. Rhino's still dialed in. Bird's in a tough spot here. Overpower is going to bring one back. I don't know if NIP are going to be able to bring this one back. They might be evil. Uh, never mind. I was gonna, well, until that pick on, on Bonker happened, I thought they had a chance, but this fight is so staggered. They're still getting cap time in mid. Maybe Tenor. No, they're going to need Alex to touch. Tenor's just going to immediately burn. And they're looking for him, too. So things are looking very dire for NIP. Oh! Tenor does wow, not get the we teleport got in time. I mean, That's the triple DPS. God. That's the power of it. He just could not. He rode in there, touched, and immediately started to transport. It just wasn't enough. Big win there for Kanga Esports just to keep them in the set. 2-1 now. They have some life breathed back into them. Very, very visible uh, frustration there from Diggy Dog down on the end. I think understandably, though. I mean, 0-11, yeah. that's a freaking frustrating game if you, uh, if you could ever conceive one. Not the way they wanted it to go, but if you're a Kanga fan, I'm not saying we have any of those here in the booth, but that's the way you want to see it crumble. At least a <laughs> I'm not, wearing, not it wearing it today. I'm not wearing it. No jersey today. You at least see one win up on the board from them. Some adjustments to be made. I mean, that was a dominant triple DPS effort. Great seeing that from them. Life still here for Kanga. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with game four. Alienware, the official PC provider of the Paladins Premier League. Welcome back, guys, to the PPL. Thank you all so much for watching. Kanga netting their first win on Fish Market. Once again, a map where dreams go to die. At first, it was extremely prominent for NIP. Kanga was able to clutch that one out with the triple DPS comp. Very, very well done from them. Yeah, and honestly, I, I think it was fun because there's a, a stat I have for this one that I think is, is nice, and that is that the, the four games that NIP have picked Maeve, now they have lost four of them yeah. total. And that ties in very well with, uh, unfortunately, the four losses Kanga has with Grover as well. But this one this one was something different for them. Very early on, Joel's was the one that kind of caught my eye on this team. Good damage coming from him. Actually, out damaging Chronix, which is even more impressive. 9 and 6 versus the 10 and 5. Very good there. Gara, 4, 1 and 25. A phenomenal support game. Mm-hmm. But Rhino was the one kind of on the right curve, right? He, early right. on, it was okay from him. Like, it was just what you would want. And then towards the end of that game, it just kind of skyrocketed. It, it just jumped up from him. And this Leon became a lot more prominent. Yeah, it was very, very dangerous in the hands of the right person. You clearly can see the that Rhino was just in the right spot at the right times in some cases. I mean, I say that a lot, but it is true. He did use the alignment to make sure he could pick off Bird there. But he was really just using Leon to her best potential in this case. 
and being able to find a win like that and get the damage like that for him. It's just, a, I think, a good feeling to see Rhino. I mean, it's interesting to know, again, Joel's and him will switch between who's playing what and, and kind of their role, but watching him switch from off tank to Leon like that is a good sign, I think, for a team that, at least from the two maps that they, they tend to go to and gravitate towards that they've run triple DPS on this set, yeah. it's nice to have someone you know that you can trust playing a DPS. Right, I mean, I guess in this case, you would just have to consider... Can Kanga keep this momentum up now that they yeah. won their first game? Can they be able to close this out? The map will be the tall tale here in this case. Bright Marsh is there. And that's going to be very interesting because it's going to be a lot about controlling those side apartments, of course, controlling the point and more so towards the open area. There'll be a lot of fights breaking out at various different times on Bright Marsh, but we'll just have to see who really can come out on top of this. And this is one of those maps. So Fish Market is a weird one and it yeah. is the only way i can think to describe it right where it's just it's got its very specific kind of nuances mm -hmm. that i would say open the door for teams like kanga to to you know if you know the map you know the comp that's going to work you pick it you win it you move on right? right so they get one here and that's going to matter for their map differential but the problem is, is that the things you do on fish market don't translate anywhere else, right? right? We talk about Bright Marsh and Jag being similar. We'll compare, you know, maps like Timber Mill, Splitstone Quarry, things like that, but it's just Fish Market is unique. Right. <laughs> and that's the only thing it has going for it. So you get that win, and the biggest question mark coming out of it for them will just have to stand and be, can you actually do it again on a different map that maybe is more standard? Mm -hmm. Or is NIP just going to run the show? Yeah, exactly. The Willow Ash is there on NIP's side, as well as the Torvald. I think the band on Kanga's side as well. They're considering who it is they might try and go for. I do, of course, like the Willow band. She's a little bit too scary on this map, being able to control so much of just anywhere. As long as she has the high ground, she's able to drop dead zone where she needs to control apartments. All from that little it's a second platform outside like there's the point and then of course there's that second platform yeah. that's like right there that's mainly mainly where she wants to be because she can control the window below her she can control the apartment she can control wherever it is it needs to and kenga is sticking with us in our band yeah, and honestly it's not bad I, like yeah. as bonker will be one to note and the team will absolutely if you ever mention this to them rip on him for it uh, he will say he has two total champions that that's anara and barrack <laughs> and that if you can You're pull some of, of them away from him then you know what does he have going for right. him they will they will make fun of him for that he does have more Last than those two but uh, with Makoa coming through which is typically a diggy pick we'll have to see where they throw him unless they do want to actually do right. and take a page maybe from Kanga's book, go for a triple DPS and flex Diggy onto something maybe more explosive like a Bomb King because I haven't seen it long enough and I like Diggy's <laughs> Bomb King. That's why I, that's the actually only analysis mm -hmm. in that part. I like Diggy's Bomb <laughs> yeah, right. King and I want to see it. That, that's, that's all there is for him. Well, I mean, hey, there's nothing wrong with wanting to see certain characters. Cassie is being hovered right now in IP side, which I do agree with. They want to be able to break that barrack shield on point. Want to be able to apply the pressure with big game as well. Will be a lot of damage onto Atlas and once again onto Atlas and also onto Barrick as well. The two of them will have a little bit of a harder time dealing with Cassie and Khan's being potentially picked as well in this case on NIP side. Still in a good position to flex either or for Diggy and for Bonker. Probably Diggy Koa, Bonker right. Khan, but you know, again, flexibility is the name of the game with NIP, so that's what you really have to beat. Atlas Barrick is probably one of the best starts to a team that I can think of. Off the top of my head, like the five champions that are locked in here are ridiculously good. And usually, given the right hands, can do it all on their own. Even if they lock in Fury right here, the same sentence still stands. The question is whether or not, again, Atlas Barrick are going to be accompanied with something that can like, the seal the deal all, right. they the needed to. They Mave is also still open. This is not yeah. a map immediately that I think of Maeve, but with Lex locked in, maybe going for Chronix, you could pick up a Maeve last pick for Evil Eye and, and still feel pretty confident as Kanga. Now here's where the question lies. The question is, does NIP try and draft with their final two being Drogos and a healer to back up the Khan or the Makoa? Drogos can be played on this map very well 
At, oh, well, Drogos is played on this map. I should phrase it this way. Drogos is played on this map very well, and he is also a good pick to have on this map yeah. with the, de the blaster damage it is that he has. So that is the question here. Will they opt to go for that and the healer, or will Kanga be the ones to sort of snatch it up in this case? But you said Maeve, Gore, to your credit. Yeah. And they are hovering it. It is a good pick. And Grover as well. I, I, I appreciate the Grover pressed. pick in this case because being able to stay next to these tanks, especially in apartments, you're able to get good more night. bang for your buck in terms of healing in a general area. Now, Maeve the, is the only thing on that NIP lineup that I am iffy about. I, mm. like, I'm on the fence because I agree with you. I think Drogo's actually is more solid for NIP. But when there's already Lex on the board and with the potential to pick Maeve, it's, it, it leans towards bad, right. unfortunately, for them. But this Maeve has just not been successful to split for them. It, it has been yeah, uh, digging themselves into their own grave almost oh, okay. every time they pick it. And... Actually, as it would happen, they yeah. do have at least one form of hit scan in Khan, but not a lot to take Drogas out of the sky. This could even be Worm Jets and be comfortable, no although Combustibles points. also no. pretty popular on this map. Either or, this Drogas is kind of feeling like he'll be free firing. Right. I, I just like the fact that being able to have a blaster means you're able to control some of those side apartments, and I feel like regardless, which is what you did just say, regardless of wh what talent he opts to go for, having a Drogos there is going to be important because he's pretty much just yeah. free firing at this case. 2-1 NIP to Kanga. Will Kanga be able to close out this game? Let's throw it down to the casters. Well, they have an interesting giraffe to kind of do so. Lex without something to turbo pocket it, it's really only getting damage amped during Fury Ultimate. Kronix is going to have to play this one a little easy. Yeah, but it's still possible. I mean, he has a lot of advantages with the rotation potential from warrants out. That up to 50% speed boost he can use to rotate around. Map's very flat, so yeah. he can take some positions really quickly that NIP won't expect. My potential. You know, when they lock them in, it's the bigger they are, the harder they fall. When you look at this NIP roster, you look at a couple of these big front lines like Khan and Makoa that could potentially run into some trouble with that execute. Hopefully, we can see at least a couple. It's a hype ultimate. A lot of fun to see multiple people killed with that one. I'm personally enjoying Atlas Makoa making it through to watch Diggy Dog and Rhino go head to head. I mean, they're old teammates, absolutely incredible off tank players, and a lot of fun to watch them go at it. On Shattered Desert, it was kind of a meh game overall, so you didn't really see a whole lot of action between those two. But this time around, I'm looking forward to it. A lot more factors in play, I think. Yeah, than absolutely. One other big thing is on that map, they picked Atlas first. This map, they went for the Makoa. So I originally thought they prioritized Atlas because of how good of an Atlas Rhino is. But clearly, it's just on a map to map, I guess, what they're trying to do. And giving Rhino that Atlas, one of his strongest champs, could be really good for Kanga. Oh, <laughs> as you can see immediately, <laughs> they're going to get right up in Chronix's grill. But the temporal divide on Bright Marsh, not something you see a ton of. Up in the air, beautiful setback there to prevent the kill from Tenor. First kill happened already. Evil Eye grabbed first blood, and he just barely gets up and over. Furia thankful for uh, giving that life. Salvo doesn't really connect for much. 78% for Kanga Esports already. An incredibly quick first capture for them. Temporal Divide goes out. Setback tried to bring on Diggy Dog back. They were not able to hit it. Very aggressive positioning by NIP. And it's working out now. I mean, they have oh, him surrounded Alex. in the tree. Alex just dive bombing in from the sky, I mean, getting two, helping to get the third as well. Basically, yeah. He's distracted Rhino long enough and quick wipe from NIP. I mean, they had this set up and then they waited. They didn't push. Right, goodbye, Maeve. I just noticed she was still gliding across over there. But they had the pressure, but they didn't pounce. They knew they had to wait. Great, I think, by NIP. Old NIP might have just gone in. Yeah. But they're learning, <laughs> I think, that they really have to find their opportunity in situations. Yeah, Alex gets it done in a big way for sure. And NIP, big take back. Grab the first one of the game. Tenor's been pretty on. I'm seeing a lot of people bouncing around from these disengages. So yeah. Tenor's pretty dialed in on the Cassie. Not something he plays a ton of either. So good to know that he is still just as flexible as the first day, the first phase. End flame just for the iframe. Does Furia get out? does, but had to get all the way out. Breaking line of sight is not necessarily ideal for Furia. A couple of seconds where people aren't getting healed. Nice setback there, but the hook still pulling it in. Second chance. Is it enough? Rhino looking for his old teammate. Will not get it done. Diggy Dog dialed in. That was some top tier off tank play. A little Cute PM roll. there from Tenor after the double kill onto his former teammate. And that was just back and forth. So strong. Inflame comes in, so Kanga tries to push. 
Diggy hides in the corner, gets whirlwinded, uses his shield cooldown. Rhino goes in, rewinds perfect. There was just perfect use of cooldowns from the team, and yeah. NIP ended up on the better end of it, I think, because the inflame was used Initial to save poke, himself, yeah. and the whirlwind was used proactively. It's kind of like team. what we talked about yesterday with VP and NIP were so good yesterday that like once somebody even got a little ahead, that tiny advantage this time around was that defensive uh, end flame, and it was enough for NIP to win the fight here. Alex gets the first kill and the second kill, and maybe even the third if he can hit his shots, and he does triple kill for the young Bulgarian. Finds three, gets the payload converted as well. Having himself a great round on Maeve. Able to do so well just to thrive in the chaos that Bright Marsh can provide. Especially the way the NIP plays it, man. They go straight oh, yeah. at you in that apartment side. That is theirs. Yeah, and they don't even have... Some teams will do that with like an Anara just to wall you in. But they, they don't have that. They don't have that kind of zoning potential. They're just going to walk straight at you. Tenor accidentally throwing off Chronix when trying to spam someone in the apartments. But still a great play by him. NIP looking a lot better than last map. I think, but because that's because I think we're in a 2-2 situation. I mean, both teams are playing that kind of standard style of play. And NIP, on their comfortable map, playing a draft they're clearly very comfortable with. <laughs> Looking like the NIP we're used to seeing. Riding out now. Starting to this one. And, and Whirlwind was used so close to the end of last round, but it's still straight to morale boost, too, is Bird. He's already back to 98% full charged. So be it. A lot of streaks burning for NIP. First blood yet to fall. Here comes the Dragon Punch. I think that's destined for Diggy Dog, and it is. Evil Eye catches that one. Fade away Fire Spit as well. Doesn't find any damage. Setback moves Khan into a precarious position. Whirlwind will try and save this team fight, or at least get Bonker in there for the touch. But the Thousand Nations of the Kanga Empire descend upon NIP, and they are just unable to bring this one back. Some more desperate touches. These rarely turn into anything, but with an Ancient Rage, I mean, if there was one ultimate you wanted to have, it was that, but it's met with the law, brother. Chronix drops it onto his old teammate's head. It's not something you have to play around very often, but Lex is here to stay, baby. Chronix. Cheeky, cheeky smile after that one. I'm sure he's feeling good. That is literally the ideal scenario for that ultimate. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that and Dome Shield, that's what you want to run the law into. Great that he had it in that situation. I was doubting Kanga's start to that mid fight, man. I mean, the early Dome Shield was really worrying me. <gasps> Unfortunate no Bite Bonker tried to get Rhino, but Tenor kind of carries him there in the <laughs> end. Follow up, disengage, and NIP stuffed back into this corner. Evil Eye getting some fire spit damage, but Grover, thankfully, Ow. exceptional at spreading heals, keeps everyone alive. And Kanga's still on the offense, but weren't able to find these kills. That's a little bit better for NIP. Well, here comes the dog. The hook misses. We're getting a little bit poked out. This is a good time to end flame. Everybody's low from NIP. Atlas just largely ignores Tenor for the time being, going for the front line, and it's working. One, two, three. Tenor gets one back, but it's a five for one. And the payload is, I would guess, just about close enough to get this one converted without much of a contest. Bonker's going to be up. Diggy's going to be up. The front line is here. We're going to be able to dive onto this last second. Whirlwind is up as well. It's going to be kind of a last-ditch effort from NIP, but they have the resources to stabilize this. Great time by Alex over the top, too, finding Evil Eye. So it ends up trading well, but Chronic's in a great position on the side. Gets Alex in the back, and now it's just Diggy on the point. Bird finding kill to Rhino too, but it's just Squishy's left at this point. Joel's is going to find this kill too. It's going to look real nice in the kill feed for Kanga. 2-2 yeah. back up there. And that was... NIP disrespected the Temporal Divide. And you really can't do that. You can't go through. You're not going to get the support that you need once you go through that. I mean, they sent both their tanks on the other side of it. No DPS is going to want to commit through it. So they kind of put themselves on an island and everyone else is just staring at them while they fell and then had to just go stall the cart. It just snowballed NIP. Well, NIP making a very clear-cut call not to pop Whirlwind there, I think, well, largely because it's all they've got seconds. right now. They've got Scout, but whoop de doo Scout's good. Maybe I'm underestimating that one. It, vision is nice, but in terms of just a straight-up resource here, they've just got that healing to work with. Kanga, whether NIP are aware of it or not, have plenty to work with. Enflame was the only thing they used to win that team fight. Temporal Divide feels like an ultimate sometimes, yeah. man. I mean, it's such a crazy ability. It's so good. 
20 second cooldown on that huge shield is very impactful. And there it is, splitting the team currently. Bonker getting set back, but Brazil keeps him alive. Even trade so far, and the Whirlwind coming out to keep everyone alive on an IP, but they're just disengaging now, finding their time to take this fight again. Well, Chronix finds Diggy Dog. Again, he's playing smart. He's not really committing anywhere that he doesn't like. Has the vision. The mark is on Maeve. Hit both shots so far. Sliding out. One more would have done it, but Tenor does him first. One, two. Now Alex, because he was kept alive by Tenor, goes on to kill Joel. Diggy Dog hiding in the corner. Tenor won't take the risk. He won't peek. He had a second there. Well, I was clutching he my chest. Like he wanted He to. really strafed over with 300 HP, and the, the coach in me was like about to write that down on a notepad I don't have. Yeah. It was really worrying me there. That is, a, uh, that is a matured, it's Bittner. I think 15-year-old Virtus Pro Bittner would have pushed that one there. Bonker's able to narrowly avoid the law. Nice fire spit timing, whether he meant to or not. The Dragon Punch comes in. It should be hitting for free. Tenor trades it out. But it's a three for one, man. It's still a hell of a mountain to climb. Quick disengage. Big damage. It's really optimally played by Tenor, but it just wasn't enough, man. There was nobody else there to help him. He's so far ahead of the rest of his team right now, too. He's 12 and 4. 24,000 damage ahead of Alex. That is just... I mean, he's just doing so much against this gang of team, but they're winning the fights. They're just kind of picking off the NIP tanks. They just keep trying to push through this temporal divide, and Chronix is just tearing them to pieces. Three kills there for him, could be four, if he does want to get this kill on Alex, but just cutting Not away and the staggering risk. him even more. Oh, well, Alex does manage to find Evil Eye. I thought Chronix was making the smart play there, but Evil Eye is unable to confirm the kill fast enough. Still probably is a, is a net wash. I don't think any the outcome would have changed whatsoever, yeah. regardless. Yeah, the rest of Kanga's going to be back. Uh, the rest of, uh, yeah, they're going to be back in time for this fight coming up. They're all already here. And now they're coming in, and now Temporal Divide and Bonker split again. Everyone on Kanga's just going to turn and burn Bonker back there. Already dead. They're taking this too fast into the Atlas. There it is. Angel Rage comes out trying to pinch, but Alex is already dead. Bird is low HP as well. Diggy Dog just trying to W key down this barrack, but he's still pretty healthy. Cancels it out. Tenor manages to bring one back, so you know, time is being bought, but I don't know if NIP are winning this one. People are falling left and right. Joel finds Tenor. Joel finds Bird. Joel finds Diggy. Joel is surging forward. He's looking for all five. Rhino gets that killing blow. Rhino gets the final and fifth, but my goodness gracious. NIP looking at a little bit of a loss here. This could be Kanga tying up the set. And the timing there of the deaths is really bad too. Now Dick has to use all his cooldowns to get in straight to the dome shield with nothing else too. Exile tries to catch some of them but doesn't find any two quick ones for Kanga. They just convert it immediately. Gee whiz. I mean Kanga playing so well off the Temporal Divide. So often you see Deja Vu on Bright Marsh as well. So. Somewhat of a break from the norm, paying off for Kanga not only in the talent choice, but the champion choice as well. Chronix played that Lex phenomenally. Yeah, absolutely. It's like was... on its own. Like yeah. I, that's the first time we've seen it be super successful without the turbo pocket. It doesn't need it. It really doesn't. The rotation potential is so good. The execution against Makoa Khan to shred the shield, it's just solid. And he, pos he positioned really well. Yeah, he did. The ability to rotate so strong with Lex, too. He's just a backline in this meta. Great yeah. on flat maps. Very, very rarely bit off more than he could chew. Very safe with the shots he was taking, the fights that he wanted. Well done from Chronix. Well done from Kanga. They've tied it up against NIP. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with Game 5. The Paladins Premier League is brought to you by Evil Mojo, developers of Paladins.
Welcome back after the break, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed those amazingly tasty jams right there with the Jazz Session. Very, very good match coming out from Kanga as well. Scores now 2-2, tying it up. Very decisive last fight as well. And I'll be 100%. I doubted him coming into I this. Too, I yeah. like This is a very good map for an IP usually. Not only that, but like Kanga, again, winning Fish Market doesn't necessarily scream as much as, as winning right. a map like Bright Marsh. That makes a pretty significant difference. Exactly, yeah. And it was like that very first last push, it was like NIP was trying to defend as much as they could, but Kanga just kept wiping them out wave after wave after wave. It was like as if it was doing like, it was like as if they were playing like tower defense in that case. They just kept running in. They kept getting the kills. And even in the post game, you can see the stats there. Oh, and I'm going to keep harping on it until it changes. Alex goes in with the Maeve the fifth time this phase they've played it. <laughs> and uh, it comes up with a fifth loss for them coming through. Not a very mm -hmm. solid game. Not really terrible for him either. It's just historically, for some reason, Maeve plus everything else they have doesn't work out well. Bonker uh, was 0-9. Bird was 1-8. And, and they just got bullied out. I mean, everybody looks Pretty decent. Joel's had a good slash line, but I think Chronix was just headhunting people the entire yeah. time he was playing this game. I mean, we were talking about it back there with production and backstage, how we were just like, and this Lex is really doing stuff. Like, this Lex is extremely powerful. He's hitting the shots he needs to. Death Haze is playing such a huge role because of the shots that he's getting. He does so much damage, and it's so hard to really respond with that. You see right there just the damage coming out from Chronix and just how strong Lex truly is when you put him in the right hands. Yeah, it's uh, dangerous when he's hitting headshots, period. Yeah. But when he's being as consistent as Chronix was throughout, that you have to maybe warrant some more attention to him hmm. when you have him performing at that level with right. Joel's performing at the level he's been the last couple of games and just everybody anybody on Kanga playing at the I guess the same level that they keep going in these last two uh it becomes a lot more frightening and and now I'm shifting away like I mean for me the the story was how good can Kanga be and, and how much are they going to be taking but really right. I think we have to look at NIP and 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 ask what's up yeah, I mean, <laughs> you were doing so well in the beginning. Fish market was one, and you're like, okay, well, I mean, it's fish market. You know, like, you're going to be able to catch out that win. If you do, like you said, it doesn't translate over into other maps, which is 100% true. But after this, man, I don't know. Like, hands off the table. Yeah. I'm not sure what's happening right now. But Kanga definitely bringing the heat in this scenario. We're going to take a look at the map, see what we have in store for us once again. And it will be bizarre. Interesting pick here. Yeah, this Interesting is, pick. I, it gets to the point where we're going places where NIP doesn't have as much experience coming through. But, right. I mean, like, a, a lot of the maps that are banned out, and well done by Kanga for their homework, but the ones that they got rid of are maps where you could expect to see NIP find some control. Right. Whereas now you're having to venture into, I don't want to call it unknown territory, but I want to say not quite as common for them. Both of these teams have only played it once in the Premier League. Both yeah. of them have lost on it once in the Premier League. So it's going to uh, come down to, I think, maybe some new strategies coming in here from NIP to make this work. Also worth noting, I think, that they, they opted for second pick. Right, exactly, yeah. We see that Torvald is gone. So is Ash. Makoa being banned on NIP's side. Last character up for debate. They are going to get rid of Atlas, of course. Kanga does indeed have first pick. They don't want to leave Atlas open and try and ban it because they have nothing else left to gain by just leaving it open. In that case, Kanga is currently thinking about their decision. They do lock the barrack first, which... I do like they have to go for the Ash Band instead of the Anara Band this time Wait, around. Maybe it's because they're feeling more comfortable. Maybe it's because they just don't feel like it's necessary against on Bazaar. It'll be really interesting to see if uh, if Anara, now that she's let through, like if NIP go for her for Bonker, if that changes everything about their strategy, right? right? I mean, a Khan Anara pickup here wouldn't, wouldn't be bad, especially with how many teams we've seen kind of lock in Barrack Anara. Right. lately, being able to kind of send Barrack off to the side, let Welcome him just do his mean, carry Chief thing kitten. that he tends to do. He does a lot of damage, but no, they, they ignore her completely here. Yeah, Khan Mabe are both locked in as NIP's response to the first pick, Barrack. Kanga hovering, uh, Genos trying to see what they can get started with this team draft. Leon is also being chosen in this case. They're looking for really just an opportunity Neil. to find something to be able to lock down that Maeve and also do damage you to that Conchie. 
I bring destruction to you. Genos. <laughs> this is good for Kanga. I mean, yeah. you know, two two maps in a row. Not only has it looked very solid for them, but you also have to to go into the or venture into the territory that is the fact that triple DPS has has been winning them some games as it stands. So, looking at this, they are in a solid position to flex around. Barrack works really well with Geno, so you can still potentially swing another tank in help. here if you really Don't want to. But to if you want to go triple DPS or maybe even use a hybrid healer, like a Grover or, or dare I say it, a Grok, then it could work here. I doubt we'll see Grok, but I mean, Grover has, has been a, a DPS kind of picked up lately on this map. Interesting. Now, here's what's interesting to me is that I see a Ying Cassie picked immediately as NIP's answer. Of course, you want to have Cassie for big game, do the damage she needs to. But Ying, it's the first time I've seen Ying not be locked in with a Nara couple together because see it's still on the table so do you know why they didn't necessarily go for the anar there i mean it might be that they're maybe banking on them not going right. for the anar i mean it's again it's been more common the last couple of days but mm -hmm. it hasn't exactly been the most common pickup as of late to, to go barrack anara so they could do that to kind of try and you know swipe that out from under an ip but an ip also could be going for maybe something more aggressive go sure. mave cassie sure insert another support slash like a, a Grover or another DPS here and just hope for that kind of control. I don't think they'll be ones to do it, but they might also be waiting to see what gets locked in before they, they fully commit here. There's the Willow wing. Victor being hovered. It might also be picked as well. Can't imagine him not being picked in this situation. Get being able to do incoming. the damage it is that he needs to to all of those targets on NIP side as well as being able to have a little bit more shield break. Um, Willow, self-explanatory, but NIP is currently looking for their last character. Of course, it would be another front line. Anara more than likely to be locked in in this case. Or actually, actually, no, I, I feel like it would have to be. Okay, well, I was. There's a reason I hesitated, and that's because they have Willow. And I'm uh, I'm going to double dip here. Not only, yeah, like you said, yeah. Willow, a good counter and good way to control Anara, but I'm going to double dip. I do not see snipers win on this map a lot, and I'm saying it that way because I can't remember if I've even seen one win. I don't think so. Yeah. And I haven't seen an IP this phase win with Maeve, so I get two <laughs> counters against them here. I, and, and just based on those okay. stats, just based on history, I have to say I, I believe in Kanga. Yeah, I mean... I believe in them too, especially after that performance on Bright Mars. They're yeah. doing really well. They're controlling things. It seems like they've waken up. They're doing what they need to. They have the momentum. And now I'm just we're gonna just have to try and see if they can really clutch this one out. We're gonna throw it right down to the casters. Thank you, boys. Set it one of the newest maps in the game. A lot of fun to watch this one play out. We've seen double triple tank. Now we're gonna get a little taste of double triple DPS. Though we've seen this matchup in the past. Yeah. A little more so than the triple tank. And it's a skill-based matchup. It's either you're going to be playing in the way where you try to force 2v1s over and over, or you're just going to try to skill it out, you know? Like loading into Team Deathmatch and get those 40 kills first, then the other team will just <laughs> give the cap to them, right? Is that how it works? And that's, how it, that's definitely how it is going to work. I don't think Bonker's going to be overly ecstatic about solo point tanking on Khan. He's going to probably look to get in there and just win the damn fight, kill more people first. Cool. Kang Esports have the option to kind of leave Barrack and get that early capture. The Barrack getting the early cap on Fish Market was something that was really, really good for them. Yeah. Gave them a lot of room to work with, a lot of patience. Early shot here. Was that, uh, I didn't actually see, was it Eagle Eye again? It is steady aim this time. Okay. Uh, unless he swapped to the last second, it is steady aim. And I don't know, the, the point fight could be sided kind of evenly because the statue gives you a lot of cover and starting off towards NIP, Alex might also find a second one, but there's a reason Leon's the anti-flank. He gets forced ah! out. Chronix finds it in the end. <laughs> so many angles to work with, man. A lot you have to be cognizant of. Last shot comes up to the high ground. Won't find much damage. Goodness gracious, Luminary burst mode. Victor is absolutely pumping right now. That grenade would have gotten a kill. The heal didn't happen exactly when it did. Bird is trying to keep this one together as best he can, but there is damage left, right, and center. Bird has done such a good job at keeping everyone healthy and especially the priority targets. My goodness. I'm chalking that one up to the support, man. He kept them in it. Yeah, absolutely. It's so much healing. The burst healing from life exchange is so huge, and it's great now, but late game, the Genos is going to scale a little bit better. So NIP, they want to win this game fast, and... Most likely starting at 1-0, unless Kanga have something crazy up their sleeve, is going to be a good start for NIP. 
The final couple of ticks come through. Kango. NIP are going to grab the first payload. It's fixed next patch. <laughs> Thank God, dude. It's been the most, probably the most annoying bug to me personally, but that's neither here nor there. Kanga Esports do get a couple of cleanup kills. NIP get the chance to go home, buy some stuff. Before they had troubles, Bird's getting snuffed out here, and Chronix steals away the killing blow. Chronix at a couple now. Let's take a look at the damage charts after that first one. Perfectly timed. Cornbread freaking on his game right now. 18K for Vic, 18K neck and neck for Victor and Leon. It's actually bonker on Khan leading NIP at the moment, but it's only one fight, one mid fight here as he finds yet another kill. Throws up the shield. Buys some time for Alex to get in there and absolutely assassinate the lone wolf. Alex playing this one smartly as well. Not really poking when they don't, or peeking, excuse me, when they don't have to be. Evil has having a really rough go of it, only doubling his Genosis damage, 6k, and that's just, a, <laughs> I mean, look at the look at the composition he's against. I mean, he, his Fae Flight isn't really safe. He's against Kinesa. Even today, we saw a, a Maeve just go straight into a Fae Flighting Maeve's face and win. Yeah, that was sick. Yeah, it was, it was sick, but it I mean, it, it goes to show how <laughs> tough it's going to be for Evil Eye to do anything on this map. It's going to be the hardest pick I think Kanga have to work with. It's a lot of pressure on a Rhino and Chronix to kind of make up for that. Well, Rhino's trying to take this fight through the gate without activating the gate and just poking and prodding at the portcullis. See if they can find a little angle to make it through there. Some good, uh, some good alliteration there. I like that. I had a couple. I had one other one today that was actually good, and I realized I was doing it as it was happening. I can't remember what it was. This is also this is just triple DPS fighting here, man. This is just poking and prodding from all these different angles. Ooh. Yeah, definitely steady aim. Did not switch at the last second because that headshot would have been about 2100, I believe, without it. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be slow. These teams, nobody wants to trip up because there's so much damage and everyone's so squishy. You're just immediately gonna go down. Gera fighting Alex with a quick one. That was just straight up poke damage. Alex just couldn't get away. Yeah, and now the gate is activated. Enlightenment it can't make it through. Cassie one dink, and the enlightenment is all that Rhino lands, but it's enough. We get to watch them go head to head on front lines. Now it's Rhino and Diggy Dog going head to head on damage. It's a lot of fun, man. These two Australians played together a long time ago. Imagine a Kanga where they still had Diggy Dog, man. That'd be a scary front line to have to try and deal with. Pretty good first round here for Victor. Chronix playing a lot of the uh, more off meta DPS champions. I wonder if that has something to do with him not really being a core DPS player for a long time in his career. So he kind of just, he doesn't have any tendencies or habits or real comfort picks, I guess you could say at this point. He can kind of do whatever. Yeah, I think I agree with that. He's kind of, he came from a history. I think he was a DPS and then a support, right? DPS, then Five, support, frontline for like two seconds. Three, two, and one. now he's here. Yeah, I mean, so switching to support in that, I mean, he has to be flexible and being able to be flexible on a role that, at this point, I would say isn't new to him anymore. At least yeah. retreating new to him. He's able to play a lot of stuff because he's been playing it for so long. So much has been meta through the history of Paladins that oh. his flexibility is oh. there, but oh. does not quite matter. Later. <laughs> First shot here from center. Finds the money. Steady aim. I think still procced, and I think it procs off the turret even if it had fallen off. Gets the kill on to Joel. Big turnaround, and the overpower does not connect, but Bonker has a nice little angle to play with here. He's really opened up beyond, forced her into an awkward spot. Evil Eye, he's going to throw his hat into the ring here, roll the dice, see if he can get some good damage out on a Bonker, and he can. Unfortunately, Khan cannot deal with the elevation nicely. Everything connecting here. Diggy Dog lining it up and cracks it home. Beautiful bolt there into the sky to shut down Evil Eye, and with it, the hopes of Kanga capturing this payload. Normally, you're not thinking about Cassie being the Fae Flight counter, but clearly, if Diggy connecting all those bolts uh, does its job more than enough. The tenor didn't even need to have that line of sight. Now he's very aggressive here, pressuring Joel's back. He's not on big game, he is on impulse because of the triple DPS matchup, so won't be shredding him too quickly, but we'll still have the advantage in all the other fights going on. And Nip, very aggressive right now. I mean, they're taking a lot of these forward angles, and that's what you have to do is triple DPS, because once they're set up, it's so hard to retake that space. Well, retaking, it's gonna be much more problematic considering they just lost Evil Eye. Now Bonker has this whole hallway to play in for free. All of NIP dogpiling 
Now that they know Evil Eye's not there to cover it, and with that, just little incremental increases in space. Anker is going to fall down, but NIP were able to get a lot done with it. Losing one member, though, the only frontliner you've got to give to buy even more space. Means your campaign towards conversion simply cannot continue until Bonker is back. That was another good one, Nick. What did I say? The campaign towards conversion cannot continue. Oh, wow. That was good. You're, 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 you're rolling I'm on it, it today. baby. You were on it today. <laughs> and this is... This is really showing the, the weakness of Triple DPS in some of these situations because normally they could just have an off tank fighting that Kinesa right now. Tenor wouldn't be able to do that for free. He would just be getting walked at by an Ash or something, but they chose Triple DPS and now Joel's kind of has to double up on his duties. He has to hold both those angles. 56 left on the clock. Ultimates to spare for either side, but it's going all blue. Kang is getting it done here with 50 on the clock. There will be another fight. It's kind of an underwhelming little retake skirmish here. That's that's the way it goes, man. It's it's very clear cut. These three DPS squads, whenever the first kill happens, it's kind of like they're winning now. You got to kind of scramble, scatter. The squishiness, though, it, it, it gives potential for it to go the other way. One yeah. person loses a fight on the other side because they think the fight's already theirs, and it could swing. I mean, it is kind of, it's slow, but once the fight happens, it can go either way, depending on whatever. One duel getting lost. Trying to get that Strafe rhythm down with Cassie is a big part of it. Chronics have been very good about playing behind these boxes, behind these trees, not giving Tenor any free shots. Rhino's been good about holding this gate in the back, but Tenor's going to crack it from close distance. That's not super t easy to do either. You pretty restricted FOV there. He's like trying to hold. Gets disengaged back in a spawn. The blast shot combo, not full damage, but Diggy is just dialed in. Two kills. For nothing. Now he's rolling in. He wants Chronix. Catches him unawares. Chronix is going to do his best to fight back. Quick reload. And he should be able to wrap that one up. Oh, Bird already got it from distance. That should let him rock, lock up this round. As Tenor continues to find frags on the respawning Kanga. I don't think they popped any ultimates there either. Uh, NIP used Illusory Rift, but I don't think Kanga used anything. So they used the loser to convert. Now they won't have that on the mid fight, but that ult charge is fast. Yeah. I mean, maybe a little slower because of the tanks, but it's a real quickly charging ultimate. He's already at 13%. It just ended when the fight ended. One of those nearing fourth ability level ultimates. Still impactful, like Tempest, like Illusory Rift, Whirlwind. But these support seconds. ultimates can really get going quickly, especially if you don't need to build into Kronos. And Ying is one of those characters. Even on Grover, where People do, Five, four, high, you know, you don't have that super two, low cooldown heal that one. you get to the soft cap with a loadout yeah. card. So you kind of need it on Grover. But even in that sense, Bird still went for it last game. He's just prepping the uh, morale today. Uh, it's faster illusions if they go down, I think, is one big part. You don't have to put as many points into Spring Bloom. Aggressive start by NIP. Look how forward they are here. And Chronix caught out, does get away the dome shield, taking a bit of the pressure out of that Ooh. headhunter. But he's still in a good position. No picks either way. Good position for both teams. They're so aware of this Kinesa. Evil Eye goes up. Barrage goggles come through. And now it's Kanga's turn. Gara, I don't know how Tenor didn't get hit by that one. Rhino finds two more. Evil Eye gets one. Everybody finding something. For Kanga Esports, and the comeback mechanic is going to make this an easy breezy cap for them. Yeah, Alex might have How a chance. How did Tenor to get not get hit by I that? I have. Uh, that wasn't even a, a wall boosted jump. That was just a jump, an empty jump, but it got over it. But I guess just lower positioning by Gera. I think he wanted to sneak it by. And Alex actually, look, they might actually be able to get in. Bonker does touch in the front, but Chronix finds Diggy. Overpower won't be able to get anything. There's no easy kills on this map. Bonker's getting saved a little bit by Bird. There it is. Overtime is going to be restarted here. The touch is actually happening. Tenor's getting in there. And the oppressor mine might actually kill Gara if it would have stuck on him long enough. Overtime expiring. There's still more red players to pile in. But Joel is just self-sustaining, baby. Barrick in the Thunderdome. Everybody has to come to me with all your abilities, brother. I got turrets. I got barricades. I got self-sustained bowling ball. I got what you need. Welcome to my world, boy. That's the mechanic and the master merchant <laughs> as well. Apparently, everything's for sale, according to Nick. But the, that point was free for Kanga, more or less. That was a pretty good deal for them. NIP trying to come up with something else. That comeback made it real easy. I can't believe they got back in, though. That was off the yeah. back of that midnight, I feel, more than anything. That shows how impactful that ultimate is. And 
Alex, I cannot oh. believe he's alive right now. Right? Ring Rhino's around the rosy his... god, dude. He's on his own side, so he can use those gates to fight. Rhino very patiently waiting. Though sitting still might have made this a little too easy Which for are? Alex. Basically only one shot connected <laughs> to. What is I love watching Karate the, Master yeah, Mave. I know. I love it. The whole kit for Mave when it's using quick succession like that, it, it's such a fun kit to watch. Leon as well. Two characters that just flow very nicely. Little did Rhino know. Ring around the rosy is the Bulgarian national sport, so Alex is insane at it. He cannot be bested. Years of practice. Yep. Years of training for Mastery. Him. Karate and, and Ring Around the Rosy. <laughs> I want to move there. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hell of a, <laughs> Name hell of a, a better country. duo. <laughs> Very forward positioning from NIP. They're kind of just abusing Tenor's ability to lock down this sight line. They want to push from the right, but not really enough is pressure, I think, there. They're going to be on the low ground if they try to do that, but a bit of a pause here. So they have time to figure out how they want to take that. If they want to take it slow, if they want to go on that low ground, or if they want to just yeah. find an angle to focus down Bonker. On um, Bizarre, when you have to be aware of so many lines of sights, it feels yeah. like it would kind of take a little bit to get yourself back into a position like that, even across the map after being zoned or something like that. You know, you have so many little things to worry about. It's almost like you have like a, like this little mental checklist in your head as you move from like box to box or tree to tree. You got to make sure you're you're square and you're ready to go wherever you need to be. But this is a fun one to watch, I think, between Kanga and yeah. NIP. Kanga's certainly holding their own here as well. And they do something that's almost a little bit uh, a little bit offbeat sending Rhino I think on this Leon to challenge Diggy Dog it's such a fun matchup to watch yeah. in so many aspects here these two have been going at it all day and they match up fairly evenly I mean they're both great players yeah definitely they're both they've both been practicing DPS a little bit we all know triple DPS is kind of shifting in and out of the meta so both these teams both these players very practiced on it at least for now we'll see how Kanga do decide to take this they're running down the checklist Hopefully they don't forget the milk and forget to turn the oven off. As so they come down on the right side, so they're choosing to go on the low ground. They're on the side. It looks like NAP haven't seen them yet, but they took a little bit of damage there on the way in. You know where they're at. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Chronix. Realizing he's probably not going to make it through, so he just throws the grenade and tries to kamikaze as much damage as he possibly can. Two return kills from Kanga. It's kind of awkward. Again, not, not a lot getting done here. The payload's starting to roll backwards. No killing blow for Rhino, so he's going to reset to square one on his ultimate. Remaining. They'll get in there for the touch. Kanga will have an attempt, Ten, but given how slow nine, these offenses eight, have seven, been so far this six, game, five, be hard pressed to actually four, find the victory. No three, defensive point two, on the line one. for NIP and every ultimate available. If anything, this just gives Kanga more time to recharge the enlightenment, so it's worth it to take it immediately going down to Diggy 2. Not sure where that was, but two quick ones for NIP, and I don't think he's going to have any time to charge his ultimate at this point. Yeah, just bowling balling around in circles. And it's about 30% here. It's the only thing we're really paying attention to. Another quick one. Rather uneventful round, I have yeah. to say. That one will not go down in the history books. The scribes won't even bother to pencil in what happened there. We're going to go ahead and take a look back, though, at the replay of Tenor somehow, air quote, dodging his time and space. See this. So he... Oh, he did get the wall boost. Uh, okay. I, did he, though? Yeah, it was on the corner. Yeah, I mean, he did. But it kind of... Sometimes it's just proximity Can we watch that wall. one more time? Sometimes it's just proximity to the wall. So I think he was close enough... And his he got well. He got the wall jump, he but it, wall it jump. still felt like his toesies came back oh. into the beam before it, it before it clicked and went off. Is what it looked like to me. I think it was just very close. So glad we got to see it again. Wall jumping, something that the game doesn't really tell you either. You kind of figured out naturally. No, it, it, it flows so well too. You jump a little higher or when you're looking at a wall. Mechanic. Every other game I play, <laughs> I always look at a wall and I'm like, "What's happening? Why am I not yeah. jumping high?" There it is. Time and space to the back line and kills a clone. And Tenor, and I think he's more happy about getting Tenor there obliterated. Young Jordy, he may go down as the best Genos alter in the history of the PPL. He's definitely got the longest reel, I think, of most of the of the Gen I that play this game, getting those through time and spaces. Midnight coming in, so NIP might be using that to touch again, but looks like they're just running it down mid, actually, with it. Chronic's getting thrown into the back, but all this damage in front. Could be bad for them if Bunker immediately goes down. <laughs> Gets the touch. Tenor's getting the kills. This is actually looking good for NIP. Oh, just barely. 
Gera will escape. Now running it down, carbining, focusing on the Barrack. Rhino falls to Diggy Dog. Barrack is all alone. If nothing else, stalling a good amount of time, yeah. getting the 99, getting everything all in order for the next fight. This is still going to happen. It's still a very real thing that NFP are going to have to deal with. Very low ultimates, though, for Kanga. All they can really hope for, for is everybody. Barrage and Enlightenment. Yeah, but for the retake, I mean, specifically, they yeah. don't have any of those classic retake ults. They're going to have to get a good pick with Enlightenment. Looks like they're choosing to go on the right side. They took the high ground and pushed out Diggy, so health is looking good for them to start, Ooh. but Evil Eyes very low in two quick ones to NIP. Nice call. You could see the target swap there. Alex just blindly pushing on his teammates. We're at 99. The overtime is there. Enlightenment's going to run right into Khan Shield. NIP, bring it back. Not an easy game for them. But Kanga have absolutely picked it up after game number two. Two four O's in a row. Yeah. It's a tough one, man. You can see the frustration in the booth. Kanga so close at so many moments. Getting it all the way to 99. So rarely does that work out. You got to kind of, it's kind of his job, but you got to kind of thank Bonka there. Gets a big overpower on the Victor. Yeah. I don't know where that Victor came from. I don't know if that was like a hard overpower for him to have hit. But he, he grabs a victor, just expels him away, and goes in there to get the touch. That was a lot of fun to watch. Very cool. One game away, separating NIP from their weekend as the victors here in this set. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back. Skillshot, the official production partner of the Paladins Premier League. Back to the PPL, guys. The f match on Bazaar is already done, already said and done. NIP currently up three to two against Kanga. Very, very nice win from them. Kanga was looking pretty close at first, but then NIP was able to grab that one back. And honestly, I, I like seeing NIP, and I like seeing what they've been able to accomplish. And the fact that they've been able to continue, I guess, their excellence here mm. is probably the most prominent thing. Bittner. You know, six digits coming through. It's always mm -hmm. weird to see the, the, the two sides of the spectrum, right? You get the 103,000 damage. And because Ying is, well, Ying, mm -hmm. she's going to be on the lower end, even of the supports. It's just weird to see a 10,000 ever show up down right. there in terms of the damage. But, I mean, oof, the 2 and 13 from Evil Eye, 8 and 12 there from Chronix. Uh, they had Evil Eye's number dialed in, and, and you sure. can't argue against 25, 21, 5, and 11. Exactly, yeah. And we had talked about it a little bit before. It seems like NIP is now a little bit on uh, the uh, the hot streak. Not necessarily the hot streak, but they're in the positive now. They won with Maeve and Cassia. No, no, it's not Cassia. Maeve and Kanessa on their team. So now it looks like they're a little bit in the positive. You just need both the characters to be on the same team. Yeah, that's the, the only secret. Is to, <laughs> if you run Kanessa and or Maeve, you have to have the other one, at least on Bazaar. It, it worked out. I was happy to see it work out, but uh, Bittner is a monster. I also yeah. think that that's, that's something that's worth noting and uh, maybe something that you'll remember whenever you see him lock this enemy. And it was just yeah. clean. There was a really good dodge from him in there as well. Like, it was just a good game from Bittner yeah. and, and a fresh reminder as to why he could be potentially known as one of the most flexible players in the world. Yeah, I agree as well. The Knessa pick, once again, a little bit questionable, but was able to actually hit its marks, find the damage it needed, and not only that, find the kills it needed to. You saw a little bit there, just a little bit of a taste there in terms of the replays. Really, really good overall play, concise, 
and consistent. We're going to take a look at the maps as we yeah. have in Game 6 right now as well. Warder's Gate. Now, this is interesting because you don't normally see this map as often. No, it's actually one of the, the least pick picked maps. Actually, yeah. One of the most banned maps, honestly, when it comes down to it. Six bands coming out throughout this phase with six picks as well. So rocking the nice 6-6. Six, six. And it, it also comes into a very weird area where... Again, similarities can be drawn to other maps, but but a lot of this map was originally when it came out. It, it was a Kanga map in my right. mind. It was a map where Kanga and Knights knew and kind of figured out what was going on. I'm not sure how much Kanga is going to be able to keep locked down here. It's been out for a little longer, so I'm sure NIP have plenty of scrim time on it. But a lot of similarities to other maps. A, a interesting point fight, but I mean Leon, Cassie, Maeve, etc. We've seen work here really well. Right, exactly. Torvald is out of the books now, along with Willow on NIP's side in response. Willow, once again, what more can you say? Not going to continually repeat myself, but she's a good character right now. She's doing extremely well in general, is always picked up by everybody. If she is just left open, Makoa gets taken out as well, followed by the young Atlas Barrack. Once again, Kanga do like the fact that they've been locking themselves some Barrack first, making sure that they have the point presence that they need. And in this case, I mean, they do have it. They do have the barrack, and IP is going to have to find a way to sort of respond to that. They do have the con open, though. The Ash is there. They still got the Inara. They have some good frontliner picks still, of course, since this was only the first one. Barrack's been, I want to say, historically good for them, but, I mean, it's kind of historically good for everybody. They're right. sitting at around 50%, 7 and 9. 7 wins, 9 losses on him. But Joel's had some really, really good games right, when he yeah, is agreed. on barrack. But you're going to have to look at, I think, more what they pair it with and where exactly that ends up. There's a couple of champions they have that they just haven't quite fully hit the mark. It depends on how Kanga want to come in. We, we talk about Maeve a lot with them. I think Eevee can be good on this map as well. Yeah. Cassie, Leon, I had mentioned earlier, all very, very strong. But NIP probably going to be looking for some of their tanks here. I, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised to see like an Anara Ash or something like that just to kind of keep themselves going. Or Khan, Anara, Anara, Khan those are the same things i just said them backward i, mean, I hey meant man, to say no, ashcon the second time but <laughs> as you could imagine it's a okay, little bit of a fright or they could completely ignore all of those mm -hmm. and just keep on going with whatever they're going to rock yeah mave genos being hovered a potential lock here as well now that's going to be interesting luminary buff is always something to go okay there's the con. that's what we were more so expecting to see in the first place con is there genos being followed up shortly after luminary buffs going to be a pretty not really a big role, but it always helps. There's nothing wrong with having a damage amp. Kanga is currently not having not picked their characters yet, but they might go for another front line. They might go for really just anything at this point. This is a pretty good pick, I think, in the Genos. Gara's been going crazy on him. Yeah. And it's been in it's a pretty decent amount of control. I mean, even that last game, even though you you counted as a loss for them, it was a good Genos play. Right. And so stripping that away does also alleviate the pressure of maybe a triple DPS or it switches them onto something that might be less consistent than the Genos, which in this case would be no, Furia. When, like, Inflame is up, triple DPS is insanely strong. Furia when Inflame by. isn't up, it's going to be very heavy 1v1 oriented. Like, how well is it, this individual performing? Right. You know, you roll back, like, I mean, even to, to maps like Bright Marsh and NIP were very solidly, like, not missing any shots, even though they ultimately lost that game. It's those kind of performances that will make the big difference. Right, exactly. Now we just gotta see what NIP opt to go for in this case. They do have the, they do have a potential frontliner as well as a damage they could go for. We saw them hover the Mave, my try go for it. They've got their healer. It's really all it is they need. They've got Khan now. All they really need is a point tank presence and potentially some damage. The Leon is being hovered. I would imagine that. Yeah. Okay. No, they opt, actually just opt to go for both, uh, just both damages. One damage, one flank, which is that can be good. Um, I mean, that is really something it is to expect in general. Leon, Eevee, Mew. instead, they're going for that instead of the Mave, which, I mean, Eevee has a lot more mobility than the Mave. Yeah, the and I would maybe up. say more survivability just because of Ice, ice block. block. I think yeah. on this one, specifically with the way that she, she gets played and usually some of the, the loadout cards she has, you're going to have, like, generate one ammo on Sword, one ammo on Ice Block. So right. I expect a lot of poke as well as a lot of fun around the point fight, the mid fight here is very prominent for Eevee, and she can pick on Cassie. 
I think, the most of all yeah. of those. And also leaves them open. Because, yeah, you grab Leon Eevee, Leon counters Eevee. So you get to, like, kind of kill two birds with one stone in that sense. But also, it could be a Nara, could be some other thing down there for their fifth pick. And it could be a third damage. It, it depends on what King could go and how NIP want to want to play it. And that's just beautiful drafting. Right. Maeve being hovered from Kanga's side as well. They are hovering it a little bit. They're trying to think about who they want to go for last time. In my opinion, I would try and go for... Okay. Well, once again, never Welcome mind. Don't even worry about that. Streets, Don't, that thought no longer matters. Maeve is there. Lex no is also being hovered, but law. is locked in for Kanga. They are running the triple DPS. Furia, perfect way to actually capitalize on that. You said it already they run triple dps the in flame is going to be a lot better when it's up than when it's not there yeah. they have to play a little bit more back respect and ip a lot more yeah but the biggest thing is that since they don't have genos it's it's just not the ever present constant boost that comes through constant and so you're gonna have to deal with yeah, the constant <laughs> boost either way it's gonna be good for them in flame again is gonna be what you play around so second round mid fight mm -hmm. could be deadly depending on how yeah. long the first one goes it could be pretty deadly. My journey leads and me so in a, a twist Soviet. of events, we're still wow. going to get two triple DPS. I don't know how I feel about Khan over Inara yeah, if as a point tank here. Yeah, I agree with that. It's going to be hard for him to be able to really fight Barrack in this case. I mean, Storm of Bullets is a talent is that you can take. But since he will be on the point pretty much controlling that quite a bit, I'm curious to see how they're actually going to try and play around this Storm. Like I said, the reason why I mentioned Storm of Bullets is because, I mean, Vortex Grip, I feel like personally can be played into the Barrack if you're trying to fight for point contestion. I feel like that might be a little bit stronger in the early game, but it falls off with Resilience. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. It's actually something that could be played, and I think... I think this is like this is on the fence, right? This okay, is right, one. Right. I think with Genos, you're going to want Storm of Bullets just because the the damage, the damage numbers buff. are going to be up. But yeah. you could run Vortex Grip. There's still just a little too much CC mm -hmm. for me to really want that one. Yeah, I agree. Let's get it down to the casters for Game Six. Thank you, gentlemen. NIP have a chance to put it away here. Some more triple DPS for both squads. Looking like it might reign supreme in this set. Kanga certainly looks a bit more comfortable there than they did. In the Triple Tank Showdown of 2019 on Shattered Desert. And we'll let that one stay in the desert. Nobody else has to talk about that or know about that one. Some more Lex for you, though. Kanga, the only squad to pull it out without the hard pocket. I guess it's just Chronix feeling confident enough. As the roster of champions for Tenor expands even further. Explosive Arrow Shaolin locked in for the boy himself. Genos boost for everybody, especially 10 of the, a lot of burst damage. Shut down and work on the barricade from down here. Explosive Arrow is great against DPS, so getting that, giving that 1,300 burst oh, damage, wow. super powerful. And yeah, 920 per arrow during a planted is uh, pretty impactful. Yes. Shreds tanks too. Yes. Explosive Arrow Shaolin. You seem happy. It's good, man. I love it. Shaolin's a lot of fun too. He, he, he had some changes that I wasn't a fan of personally, but I, you know, it's good to see him kind of peek his head back out. Fun to note that planted arrows, like you were saying, are just basic arrows with a different damage value initially. Yeah. So you can't wrecker, cauterize, luminary, all of that stuff applies. But luminary doesn't traditionally boost abilities. It is, for all intents and purposes, a regular auto fire attack. Bonker finds Evil Eye. Rhino gets Diggy. Yet again, another fun match to watch these two go head-to-head -head on the damage charts. Hello, hello. Tenor even frustrated with himself, just reacted. Did not end up going the right way. So Yosemite Sam for Chronix. He gets not just the uh, free kill there on Tenor, but one that he had to earn on the Alex as well. Great retake there from Kanga. Chronix finding the hole, and he's basically their anti-flanker here. I mean, NIP have the Leon. Diggy's going to have to do a big job there, but... The in pursuit is so good at dealing with those flankers and that burst damage. Solo tank bonker going down in mid is going to make this touch really hard for NIP. It's a lot of pressure on Alex to get this touch. Uh, I think he got. No, I didn't get in there. Just at the finish line, not across it. Or even on it, which would have also worked. Evil Eye, Chronix for two, Gara for one. Kanga Esports trying to force that game seven if they can. 1 0 start here on Warder's Gate. How much is that outcome affected by Tenor uh, going off the map? Slipping and falling. Uh, I think Chronix would have won that duel, but it kind of just ensured it more than anything. 
Yeah. I think it went from like a 60% to 100% chance from that happening. And that minor mistake, I mean, Tenor, he's been here a long time. I just hope it doesn't get to him. But Kanga looked very different, I think, with Evil Eye on a character that is not hard countered by the DPS on the other team as Kanga get three in this fight. Make it four. Birds, the last one left. Might trade for Rhino, but Somersault reset, even with that 15 second internal cooldown. Still a very good card. Now NIP. They're going to be in a decent position. Kanga have to kind of shake them out of it. Yeah. They have the Midnight if they want to engage them. They have the momentum. They're feeling good. They're kind of laughing, smiling. Sounded like overpower missing to me. I don't know why. Even though we were watching Khan and I knew it didn't happen, I just felt like I heard it somewhere on the map. Quick little pause in, pause out. Something going on in the NIP booth. We'll figure that one out for you guys. But the way this has gone so far, I mean, in my opinion, shown great resilience from Kanga to yeah. be, you know, just destroyed in the first two, then coming back, winning a couple more, and now even even here to be able to make your stand on Warder's Gate, being down so much, you have to kind of hand it to him for that at the very least. Not really tilting, having a couple of frustrating moments. I think they were um, really frustrated earlier on in the set, not winning Bizarre. That was a close one. Yeah. Probably could have been called the most winnable game for them at this point. They could have been up 3-2 here. But that's not the way the cookie crumbles, and Kanga have not really counted themselves out just yet, and you have to commend them for it. Yeah, they're also back on a comfortable map for them. Warder's Gate, and I think another Kanga common map for them. They won in that a lot early. When they weren't really winning anything else, they were still taking, I think they took no Warder's Gate off of Na'Vi mm. early in Phase 1. So back to this map comfortably. Weren't playing triple DPS then, but clearly they've been practicing this map quite a bit. And yes, they will engage with the Midnight, but they need to find a kill to make it worth. Bonker throws up the shield. Evil Eye into the back line. Finds Tenor now working on this Khan. Khan's exposed his back to the rest of Kanga. Somebody needs to get the angle. Bonker will find it. Chronix has really been on point with this Lex, though, man. He's cracking shots home left and right. 2-0 start for Kanga. I love it. Yeah, Lex was so underrated without that pocket. I mean, the pocket's great. Giving him that extra sustain is fantastic, but he does such good damage with Death Hastens. It's, you cannot ignore it. You, you have to pay attention to him. And then he just gets away because of Warren's out. This was that duel, yeah. He kind of had the advantage even until that full HP. And then managed to get this kill on Alex, yeah. too, with the in-pursuit. Anti-flank power of Lex showing strong. I like to call him the Yosemite Sam when he goes to that. I think if he does, if he can stay on the map there in stealth, then Alex gets there, and that's actually a, that's like a two v one probably. Maybe he bring, maybe he trades out evenly, but I still think it's sided towards Kanga. Even that, even then, because he was full HP, Alex would have gotten there. I think a second later, and and Kronix was was pretty healthy that entire time, just reaching 20k, and he's still doing his anti flanking job here at the start of this mid. He's got his mark on Eevee, so eyes on her. I don't see her coming. Ice Storm on the objective. Scares everybody away from it for the time being. Alex has an opportunity to get in here. Misses a couple of mid-range shots. Doesn't want to be the first one to fall. Tracking down this Eevee man. Chronix has already found one. Chronix gets another. Crony boy going off and in. Now finding Tenor as well. Chronix is just walking through this fight, and nobody is stepping up to him. He's been such a good player this entire season so far, this entire phase. And now he's just, I don't think he's ever had like a breakout game, breakout performance. And I think this might be it. Gera finding Diggy in the back. Enlightenment uselessly hitting into the pillar. So this is even better for Kanga. Now they're going to have to go in without their healer to keep it going. And they're not even going to be able to touch. Hi, oh my. Certainly a problem here. What is it for NIP? Is the Shaolin? Is it the Eevee? Is it the Leon? Is it just Chronix having that type of game? I think it's a mix of Chronix just being almost unstoppable right now. And I don't think Alex is finding the value he needs to on this Eevee. He's 0 and 5 what right now. What makes you think that? He's just, <laughs> Going. he's just dying in situations that I think other Eevees would be getting out of. He's so flexible, but it means he doesn't specialize in a character. So watching him in these kind of situations where yeah. someone who's playing Eevee every day, all day, would be getting away like a fish or a freeze. Bro. They'd be getting out, and Alex is just not making the right decisions with his cooldowns. He's getting caught it? in front of Chronix. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I just sat down to cast this game, and now it's, it's almost over. That was with a pause, too. It's like seven minutes on the clock. The payload is knocking on the door. Kanga lose Evil Eye in the air. 
They're getting a little ahead of themselves there. Diggy Dog finds two. Alex throws it up. Diggy finds three. Not ready to go quietly into that good night. Says Dilly Dilly as he heads back to spawn. Maybe to buy an item. No ults up. Position. No ults up that you know, right now for NIP. They're close to the. Well, they just got the ice storm, as I was saying that. But Kanga, if they want Wait to. Wait a lie to the viewers. Jeez. Yeah, I'm so sorry. This is all my good rep with the community has just <laughs> gone away in this one moment. But Kanga can execute right now if they want to. I think they have to know the ultimate situation. So if they want to just push this immediately, I, I wouldn't be shocked to see them do uh -oh. something like the Inflame. That's one good way to start it. It certainly is. Here we go. Everything's going to hit the wall. Ice Storm spent as well. Blinking up and over. Now back, looking for the 1v1. Back in a spawn for safety. But Evil Eye's already found Tenor. The law is dropped. Nobody died from it. Look at this. Into the back line. The crossbow bolts might are and are perfectly timed. Rhino gets the revenge kill on the Diggy Dog. Bonker manages to trade one out. But this is a storm that I don't know if it can be quelled. Tenor is back. And now, just like that, he's died yet again. 13 seconds on the clock. Kanga will not need it all. It took them just under eight minutes to 4-0. Ninjas in pajamas. We have our game seven as if game six never even happened. What a convincing victory for Kanga Esports. Yeah, what a response by them. And that's what happens when, in a triple DPS composition, all your DPSs can do something. I, I really felt like Evil Eye was kind of out of his element on Bizarre on Willow. It wasn't really the pick there and now they have three characters that did what they needed to and they won almost every single fight wow nothing went nips way just like that we're headed to a game seven guys i mean this is a this is a chance for ninjas and pajamas the number one seed in the league to le lose both of their games against the fifth and the sixth seeded teams in the league so we are competitive through at least six teams guaranteed here if kanga can grab this w we're gonna head to a quick break and when we come back game seven Respawn, the official gaming chair of the Paladins Premier League. really really appreciate the fact that you all are sitting here watching this beautiful gameplay that's happening right now and if you would have told me before the set actually started the score is 3-3 I wouldn't have believed you I, I would not have believed you same uh, yeah. like, I mean if you had told me that out of the two sets today that one was going to go 7 I would have been like okay so when does NIP Kanga start because right. it's, <laughs> it's going to be what 4 o'clock 5 o'clock before we get in there Yeah, but you know, VP Navi going as quickly as it did. Mm -hmm. This one, this one going to seven blows my mind. Yeah, oh, a hundred percent. Because it's like you wouldn't have expected Kanga to be able to go three three, especially not against NIP and even the post game stats here. Not really any super crazy damage, but it was just the play, the concise, the consistency, the surgical precision that Kanga had during that game on Warder's Gate was enough to net them a win and four. Yeah. Oh, at that. That's what's getting me, is that it's 4-0. Oh, NIP could not cap a point on Warriors game. Well, there's something that uh, that works together here. Alex is 1-7. and seven. Didn't I... quite work together with the team. 6-3 there for Rhino. 6-2 and two for Jera. I mean, him putting his name on the board uh, as much yeah. as he did was impressive. But, but there seems to be some sort of theme here for Chronix and Lex. Lex yeah. And it is just uh, it's a, it's a good theme for him. I don't think it's going to work on every single map, but... So far, he, he has it unlocked. The two maps he's chosen it on, Bright Marsh and Warder's Gate, have 
clearly been games where he's just been popping. He's been popping off, and he's been doing it well. 11 kills, 5.3 KDA, 39,955 damage. Nothing crazy. Not crazy damage, but it's the fact that Lex is there. Like, you can't always look at the stats of DPS in terms of, like, if it's astronomical, like, oh, he just got 21 kills or something. Yeah. That's crazy, right? But in this situation, it's the fact that Lex was there, was popping when he needed to, and they were able to cl close that game out. Yeah, and it just looked good. I mean, there's again at that point, there's not a lot to dissect into. Like right, exactly. Said, it was a yeah. four-zero, and so he he played really well when he needed to in mm -hmm. the two rounds that he got <laughs> to showcase <laughs> yeah. things. But uh, it it opens up the discussion with a four-zero. I mean, I keep calling for one map, and I've said it five times to you Let's behind see if the it scenes, is. Oh! and I'm wrong every <laughs> single time. Okay, I've been saying for like four or five maps now Stone keep. that it's going to be Stonekeep, and I have been eating my words every single time, and I'm okay, I guess, at the end of the day to, to end it <laughs> with that note for me. I mean, this is I mean, this is it, dude. Like, this is the very, very last game. Frozen Guard is here. It is the last map. I am yeah. surprised on oh, Stonekeep as well. I, I'm surprised that Stonekeep wasn't picked as well when you were telling me the stats, the success well, rate that NIP has on it. One of, not only that, but it's one of the most picked maps in the league. Frozen Guard's the, <laughs> and coming into this week, Frozen Guard was the least picked in the league, and so uh, we've, we've switched that around about as much as you can. Wow. But it's also, it, it, ignoring anything NIP related, mm -hmm. this is a good map for Jera. Just, oh, uh, yeah. Just historically, this is where he got a quadra kill it. on Genos, and that that's should be forever burned into your memory for Frozen Guard with him coming through. So I expect a lot from him, maybe even some I contest over Genos coming Stay through for this set, since both teams have been kind of hovering on him lately. They picked Ash, and that's what's interesting to me is that we've seen a couple seen a couple times this set that Ash has been banned, right? Like, it hasn't been as often. You haven't really seen people pick it as much. But what that tells me is that NIP is looking for a strong fight. They want to be able to survive. They don't want to be able to go out at least against how they – not necessarily – I don't mean to say, like, go out against Kanga, but that is literally what would happen if they didn't end up winning this game. Yeah. They want to have the Ash for sustainability purposes. And Kanga, I'm going to go for the Barrack in this case. Don't know who else it is. They're going to try and hover. They might try and go double front line or – in this case, I guess, Barrick, Eevee, you, which Bob. is fine. Eevee's good on Frozen Guard, I believe. Yeah, no, she can she can come here. And again, like referencing to uh, to Fischeko's play like a pro for her. This is her quote unquote weakest map. But mm. from what we've seen out of her, that doesn't necessarily mean too much. It's right. the one that she's maybe the easiest to control on or maybe easiest to predict on. And the only real thing I think we saw yesterday that, that that made her kind of sit down and get locked away was a specific angle of Drogo's play that that kept her kind of out of the fight and kept her controlled and, and locked down kind of the pillars area of yeah. the map over cliffside and, and locking down that nice wide open, easily maneuverable flank route. Interesting. Okay. You and Nara Maldamba, here. you do not see Mr. Snake Charmer as much anymore because of a point it was that you have Something made and that we gonna. together have made beforehand, before this current game, is resilience. Most of the times you have supports it is that are picked that aren't prone to using Rezo to stop their ultimate. In this case, they have the Dread Serpent, but this is like point fight city right now, is yeah. what I'm seeing. This is like point fight. We're not giving this up right now. Well, when it comes down to it, so so there's something specific about the way this draft is going from, from NIP that is speaking out to me. Mm -hmm. And it really does come down to one one thing alone, and that's with Damage Amp being as prominent as it has been this entire set. This is the one map so far. No one's looked at Genos. No one's going to right. Furia. Like, no one cares about it, right? And that's going to be, I think, the, the distinction for Frozen Guard. But also showing that NIP are planning more on their, I guess, point fight, like you said, yeah. very point oriented in terms of healing. So maybe we see a sniper come out to ha like fight on the side, maybe a flank here for them. But they are almost all in on the objective. Yeah, one hundred and ten percent agree with that statement. There, I'm trying to see who it is they're going to go for in terms of the last two picks here. About five seconds left. They've got some bank time. So, who do you see them picking for before they end up picking it? Hmm. I How's this unfolding? I, so I don't want to say this because I've been ripping on it the entire time, but I mean, a Maeve here would be very good mm -hmm. to match against the Eevee. 
Uh, Drogos, if they want to play it in that very specific manner, could work. Willow, I completely blanked on Champion her as a blaster. Would be solid here. And I think we had said this yesterday, but this is one of the maps that that Victor kind of made it. Not, I don't want to say his debut on, but when he was kind of in the resurgence area, this is the map that I feel more most brought him into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. Furia is potentially the last character that is locked on Kanga's side. They're hovering it, but they have the aggression. They have the means of fighting. That much is for sure if they lock in Furia. They had it before. Now it's just pure aggression. And do you feel like Furia can sort of count, uh, let's not count, counter this uh, this point fight, like this staying defensive an comp that NIP have? It can in the moments where Inflame comes up. I think the, mm. the healing is going to be good. If they, I mean, if they really want to go toe for toe with Anara, Solar Blessing, but that's not a good call, I think, right. with the Eevee and the Cassie. I think the healing is going to be there. I think she can outdo Maldamba. And so ults from the supports is probably going to be actually the most essential thing for victories in rounds two, three, maybe right. four if we get there. I can understand that as well. We see that the teams are locked in. This is it, game seven. Take it away, casters. Thank you, boys, up there on the desk. Great job. Now, looking at these two drafts, I, I think we've strayed away from you know the double, triple tank, double, triple DPS, yeah. back to kind of basics. And, and in a basic environment, I'm just I tend to lean more towards NIP in that in that I think Kanga have just thrived in the chaos of this set more than anything. I think I agree. I think the only edge I would give to Kanga would maybe be the fact that they have a flank. I was worried at first going in. I'm thinking, all right, they're just gonna get Leon, and then he realized he's not gonna be able to do much of anything. But they go Victor Willow instead, so a little bit more I think less counterplay for Evil Eye. He'll be able to get a little bit more done. A lot of pressure on him, I think. This Certainly, certainly, certainly. Everyone's going to have to step up to the plate. And double shielding front line. I'm just trying to kind of go through my head and, and think about why they would want to go for victory here over Leon. Raw record power, maybe, if anything. Yeah. If they think the tanks are going to be a problem. But if anything, I feel like the tanks on, on Kanga have been performing really well. It's I think they've been outperforming NIP. Yeah, it's hard to deal with Eevee as Victor too. I don't like that. I don't like that matchup one bit. On Victor, very aggressive here to start. They're walking straight in, but Tenor gets Commanders grabbed in and picked off right away by Chronix. <laughs> Mid sprint thrown in, but NIP still find the better end of the trades. Yes, sir. Eli's gonna even it up. Die right back to NIP. Conquer will, uh, excuse me, Barrack will try and uh, even this one up a little bit. Actually. If he landed both those shots, he might have killed Alex as well. I think he missed at least one there. 21% grab for Kanga. Not the cleanest win, but a win nonetheless for NIP. Already at 50% on the frontline ultimates as well. Getting a lot of effective damage out. That's definitely going to help NIP. Especially if this fight gets dragged out any more than it looks like it already will be. Barracks still on the horse, taken off. Frontliners have to get moving. They want to get in there in time for a touch. Diggy Dog looks like he's going to die for the zone. He wanted the kill with the shoulder bash, and his indecision has put him in an awkward spot. Chronix will take him out for it. The contest is here. Kenga are going to get their touch. Chronix going to get his triple kill. Might even make this a quadra. One more. It's stolen away. Just like that. Kenga back in it. Really is just the tanks on Kanga performing so well today, I think. At least since the second game, or after the second game. They've been a force, I feel. NIP kind of struggling, Diggy. Moment of indecision. Maybe just the pressure getting to him in this game seven. Didn't know what he wanted to do and got caught right in the middle of everything. The worst possible place. Chronic's finding a quick one onto Alex in the back line too. Next to the no fall off on Cassie. And again, Diggy caught in the middle. He just can't decide what he wants to do with this Ash. Caught slipping, and it's the first pick too, so you got to get value out of that, you'd imagine. Or you're going to be in a tough spot. Tanner using the wrong rifle too, man. you got to gotta be one Kator or Reaver. Whichever one you prefer. Coloration matters not. It's all about that ADS, baby. 155 on the clock. Payload already bearing down on about 60-70% completed. Diggy Dog's going to get flipped up and over again, but is it just the same story? of death after death, almost on cooldown for Diggy Dog here on the defense. Seven seconds till he's back on his feet, has his assert dominance as well. Kenga have everything. Khan looks like he's positioning to throw somebody off the map too. 
Looks like he just wants to help them take that high ground so the will can't do anything. Double, Double roll. roll. Somersault, still a fun <laughs> card to <laughs> play against. And Valkyrie was not Look at that baby wall. The Butter stuck stick wall. No. Oh, no. They have no way to contest now either. Bird's going to drop down for a moment, but I mean, they should immediately take down these DPSs that are contesting. Diggy oh, did come goodness. back from spawn, but I mean, look at the surround. I mean, he's immediately going to fall. And Dude. Kanga. With no, with no alts either. Chronix is 9 and 1 right now. I saw that in the moment Chronic. before we cut to this. And He's, again, hey this guys. is his breakout game. <laughs> oh my gosh. Big set for the kid on Lex, on Cassie. Whatever it is, he stepped up to the plate. Baited Diggy Dog in. Rolled out. Got the shoulder bash. Came back in. And Diggy Dog was the first kill on his rampage through the rest of NIP. 9 and 1 start. 0-3 oh, for Rhino. Tough stuff here for the front line, but it's all good. Everybody picking up a little of that resilience. You've got your Red Serpents. You've got Shoulder Bashes, Kinetic Burst, the Sir Dominant, Seismic Crashes, all tops of CC you want mitigated there. Every single ult up on both sides and the resilience. The credit bonus from that cap is going to help Kanga so much. The Ultimate IP are just going to do less unless Kanga completely flubs them. Looks like they want to initiate with a Fae Flight because Resilience won't do anything against that. Can they find the Focus Fire? Looks like they're just going to oh. avoid him, but Bird finds Evil Eye to start this off for NIP. There it is. Dread Serpent expended for it. Up into the air. Victor from distance is going to try and get it done. Joel takes down Bonker on the objective. Eric's finding a couple of shots of these peripherals. This doesn't look like Sir NIP dominance. wants to start that fight. No, not really. I mean, if their dominance Used, doesn't really get too much value. Buys some space, if anything. Diggy Dog is able to grab Joel. Evil Eye's looking for Diggy. He's going to find it as well. Just cannot find a clean victory. They're going to place an R onto the objective, but quickly Bonkar does not like what he sees and evacuates the objective. Chronix gets bitten there now looking forward. It looks like the campaign is complete yet again. Seismic Crash just to stay on, but is it enough, man? Bird is already dead. This ultimate has been used. To what avail to keep Bonker alive? Yes, but he's effectively just staggered himself out even further. If they wasn't against oh, those the ice champions, storm. it would have been no. so good. But NIP are just falling apart. The oh, stiff arm. The worst two possible champions to use Seismic Crash against. It was, I mean, it was Eevee and it was Khan. Eevee just ice blocked it. Khan just shouted it. No damage could have gotten through, even with Alex there spamming straight down on them. So, Kag in the lead 3-0 and. We've seen NIP come back from a 3-0 deficit, but they were already playing better than they look like they are now, at least in that game. Yeah, I don't know. There's a chance they start to get a little tilted, maybe a little short with each other, but it ain't over till it's over. The goggles go up. Tenor finds one, pushing forward. He wants more. There's a lot of low HP bars. You just need to capitalize, and he will. Bonker even throws his hat into the ring. Tenor trying to escape, and he will, thanks to Bird. Body blocking, rolls right by him. 18 streak, it's not enough. Bird is not going to go out of this one without a fight. Does everything he can to keep Tenor alive there. Chronic still manages to take him down with him. Bird is not going to hesitate to hit those couple of shots. All good stuff for Mr. Eric. I want to take this refight real quick, too, because Tenor does have to come back from spawn. Inflame 2 coming in quick. Bunker already using his wall. That means once that's down, this inflame damage is going to help a lot. But <laughs> they find Rhino. Even trades back and forth so far. Gera has to kite to the point. Gera struggling to get out of here. He's running around. He's going to try and stay alive. I don't know, man. I always compliment victors on their ability to identify a situation they are not going to escape from and to just go out swinging. And yeah. his last two deaths are not going out swinging. I mean, he's just kind of running around. Can, can I see Tenor's build? I want to sure. see what level of scramble he's running. Because I feel like those shots aren't really connecting for as much damage as they would be normally. Max scramble. So 25% DR. Yeah, I saw a 510 shot. And I'm like, all right, that's something's going on. He doesn't have Haven 3 already. They lost both point fights. So that's, I think, why he's sprinting around like that. That's his best chance to get out of it. He's just overestimating the DR a little bit too much. Built the slowdown entirely for it. There's a chance there might be some level of possession as well from Maldamba, perhaps making this victor a little bit tanky. It's red, it's blue, it's red, it's blue. Red starting to take over. Chronix finds three more. Gara throws his name onto the feed as well. 11 seconds left on the clock. Dome Shield up, Ice Storm up, Overpower up, Scout up and ready to go. Kanga might just be able to close this one out 4-0.
it's possible. They have good positioning right now. They have to focus down Bonker, though. Hopefully for them, he gets another butter wall, like you called it. Overpower coming in, though, on the Dom of the Healing shield. Gone quick, and Rhino manages to get away. But a fantastic barrage even trades back and forth. Rhino has to dash onto the cart. I think this is going to be, yeah, this is definitely an IP. It has to be Evil Eye on the cart. It are not able to do that. So this next mid fight is going to be tough for Kanga. They used a lot there. NIP still had a lot of ultimates in the tank. Yeah, all they used was Barrage. So everything else is available for NIP. They have comeback mechanic in this round. Didn't help them much last time. Diggy is 2 and 10. Had a really rough first defense. Got to be able to pull this one back, though. 11 and 6 for Evil Eye. He's in rhythm. 16 and 4. I don't know if I have an adjective. Appropriate for broadcast for what Chronix is doing to NIP at the moment. He's really going off on him, seriously. He yeah. is, again, just really good. And then the inflame is going to help a lot, too, because the inflame yeah. during that second mid fight basically won them a 3v4. They inflamed and just waited, and no one in NIP was willing to walk in. So that with the five people, even without the extra ultimates, it could be enough to swing this. NIP are starting on the objective this time, though, so that advantage is going to be gone for Kang. I don't know if you want to challenge this one, my friend. You're a great EV player, but nobody's that good. Alex just needs to pick a direction, figure out where he wants to go. He's not really involved in this fight. Took the scenic route around, and it's given Kenga time to win. Nip are just panicking. They used every single ultimate and basically found nothing. Everyone managed to kite away. Kanga now still in control, but they do find Joel's on the retreat here. Uh -oh. Great flank by Evil Eye, though. And he blocks Diggy Dog's escape. Completely surrounded, but it's only Squishy's you left. kill them both. As long as NIP you keep the focus up, they should be able to win this. These are big shots from Evil Eye. He needs to connect all of these. Running out of cooldowns. He's getting surrounded Dude, here. Comeback okay, mechanic. No, he's going to let that one expire <laughs> for sure. He's probably the one to get the touch he here. He still has it. Ice block and sword. Five. He will probably wormhole make it even safer. Yep. So they have that refight, and he gets away from the Willow too. with the there to peel yeah. for him. No ultimates. I don't think they can extend this fight. Alex tracked him through it. Ice Storm is coming up. That's really it. That's the only ultimate that's close to being available. Alex finds the first kill. Chronix needs to go huge. He's done nothing but go huge so far to the back line. He goes. Evil Eye looking for a big shot there. He finds it. Ice Storm's ready. He just throws it out, catches Alex. Nobody there really to follow up. Bird killed Chronix. I don't know where that came from. Gara's going to get in there. He's going to try and touch. Escort. But it will be an NIP capture. And now they'll have the chance to calm down, go on the offense, start talking again, figure out what's going wrong. What do they want to change? What do they want to do for this offense? Do they plan to get this one through? Do they just take it to 2-3, take it slow, make sure they have all their alts? A lot of different strategies could be put into place. I think NIP are going to be a little impatient here, but Kanga are even more impatient. They're coming in quick. Fae Flight and Barrage to counter it, but even with two ults used, kills are still going towards Kanga. Yeah. And Victor from distance is still going to be good. We you know. Is that the that grenade sounds so cool. Is that attached to the skin? The wolf skin. I think I it had oh, the to. barrage you mean? No, like he like threw the grenade and it was like Tenor, can you uh throw a grenade again? I don't know. Maybe I it was just the wolf growling or something. <laughs> I don't know. That was cool. I liked it. Could be. I think after maybe two kills, it kind of got that. Did you, did you hear it? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. It's I, sick. I, I wasn't. I, I need Hang to listen. listen, listen. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Woof, woof. I, feel, I like I it. That. That's actually cool as hell. This is the point. This is the point we've gotten to. A fine this game detail. Has been really going back and forth. <laughs> trying to dive this top area, but Evil Eye still has it kind of under control. This is good tank positioning by NIP, but the DPSs aren't really in a place to help them clean up, and Diggy Dog goes down to start the fight. Plenty of time left to, to give this one back. Yeah. Spend some money as well. Let's take a look at the items here. Let's see where NIP are at. Caught three and a couple of important members. But a lot of money in hand. I mean, 1,200, 1,400 for Bird. Those are the streaking members. Yeah. They haven't yeah. had a chance to go back quite yet. And actually, one thing, I noticed a lot of Willows have been doing the don't get caught, don't get wrecker, and just rush your defensive items kind of play. Hmm. Alex, not doing that. So his survivability is impacted a little bit. Clearly not mattering too much, considering he's on a 13 streak right now. But Oh, he's going for it. Glad we're watching Evil Eye there, because if he hit that. I don't know. Pog. Yeah, I would have I would have freaked. Ten are getting pressured a lot in main. Fargus on the card still dying. I don't know. Kanga's defensive positioning is just so strong. It's so hard for the tank to not need to get anything done. Ooh, listen to the grenade again. Yeah, <laughs> I love it, dude. That's a what a what a skin, man. Very, very well done. Pretty old at this point, but I guess I just haven't played it yet. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4 goes the clock. Every ultimate's available, but again. 
It's very likely that NIP just take this one slow. Especially do whatever whatever happens, happens. They're going to save every ultimate and make sure that they're in the best spot possible for the next round. Bunker just delaying himself. Wong himself off kind of just to, just in case they're missing an ultimate, you know, make sure they don't get it. But yeah. still goes down in the end. They do get that credit bonus for getting the kill. So credits should still be in Kanga's favor. They did get two point caps and all those kills on that defensive round. All ultimates online means I feel like Kanga have the advantage in a, every ult online mid. But NIP, they changed it up. They got cap time. They knew that was the advantage they had to play. But I, I can't count Chronix out. I, I, after how he's been playing this entire set, I can't say that <laughs> I think Chronix will lose the fight because he'll, just, he'll win it just to spite me. Double defensive picked up for Evil Eye and Chronix. But which defense is flip-flopped? Haven for two, Evil Eye, Blast Shields one. for Chronix, 18 and 8, 17 and 7. Great slash lines from both back lines from Kanga Esports. Calm before the storm. Just players ride up. Looking for angles, ways to use their ultimates to their advantage. Scout is the first to be popped, but many more shall follow. Faith Flight being the first. Nobody dead just yet. Everybody's still jockeying for a position. Ice Storm is expended. Dread Serpent Barrage is hitting the wall, ladies and gentlemen, and Flame is popped. Diggy Dog goes down. Evil Eyes hunting. He's on the prowl for more. Rolling in his Chronix, looking to make the play. Puts Bonker in a really tough spot. One more jump shot will do it. In, out, grenade, scrambling. Tenor wants to stay alive here. Bird at his back, ready to keep him standing, but up over the top. Evil Eye hits it, loses his life for it. One more shot. Chronix is dialed in, ladies and gentlemen. He just can't miss. He connects every single one, and now I don't know if Kanga have a chance. Diggy goes in for it, has a certain dominance, so he'll be able to delay this quite a bit for the respawns. Chronix so low here on the side, and Bonker knows it. They Ooh. don't have any more ways to extend the fight, though, so Kanga kind of have to give this up a little bit. Maybe not, though, with those two picks. This stole this would be anything, and the overpower to turn it. Kanga, we're getting cap time this whole time, too, so retakes are not on the table for Overtime them. Overtime is going to almost expire, barely getting in there for the touch. Alex going to cost him his life, though. Diggy Dog still alive, still here, getting plugged away at. He's turned to dust. Bird one last time. He gives it all he has, and it's Kanga in seven, baby. NIP lose both as the Australians take it. One hell of a war between these two teams. My goodness gracious. Fifth seed and sixth seed upsetting NIP this week. What is going on? That's more losses than they had in the entirety of the first phase, yeah? Yeah. That is just three straight. That's five losses. Three straight for NIP, which is is crazy to me. These teams feel like they've, seems like they've figured them out almost. I mean, Kanga started on the back foot, but they found the weakness. They punished the aggression from Bonker, from Diggy Dog. They just could not find the same footing they were for the entirety of phase one. Good friends, of course, Diggy Dog. Hugs there for Chronix. Came from this team. Played with the Australians for a long, long time before being picked up by NIP, the first imported player to play in the Premier League before it was even the official landing. He moved all the way to Sweden to play yeah. with Bird back in the day. So big moves here. This is definitely a special matchup for him. I'm sure it, it stings just that little bit more to lose to Kanga, though, especially in seven in such a dramatic fashion. One of his best friends in Chronix kind of putting the nail in the coffin of the crossbow bolts in this case. Let's get it back up to the desk and hear their thoughts. Thank you guys from the casters booth. Really appreciate everything it is that you guys are doing, as well as all the other teams as well. But Kanga, four to three. I didn't see it in my wildest dreams. They played out of their mind, and there's one person that everybody has on their mind right now. Chronics. Chronics. And Chronics. well, I mean, I'm gonna give some some huge shout outs to Evil Eye as well. I mean, they they both knocked it out of the park for that one. And uh, friendly reminder, this set started with Kanga not getting a single point for <laughs> yeah. two maps. Yeah. And then it just turned on its head. I don't know what it is. Uh, either they had something that they flipped on, the pep talk mm -hmm. they had, or whatever is going on with NIP. But they they were phenomenal this game. And again, Chronix, like you said, was number one, I think, on everyone's mind. Mm -hmm. Joel's behind him at 87,000. Evil Eye doing 85,000. Like, Bittner had good damage. Alex had good damage, but... The kills were all coming up in favor of the Cassie and the Eevee. Yeah, I mean, 
what else can you really say about that? You take a look at the KDAs here too. Both Evil Eye and Chronics averaging 20 kills this game. 20 and 9, 20 and 7. Chronics in this case, 22 assists. Evil Eye, 17 assists. Rhino, 23, 24, 34 on the side of the Furia as well. So powerful. They were well aware of what they need to do. They were well awake, ready to play, ready to fight their hearts out. And it definitely netted them a win. Now, in theory, and I, I, the re there's a reason I have to word it that way, when Willow's in, like, Fae Flight and things like that, it's supposed to be harder to hit your Cassie yeah. bolts. And obviously, Chronix didn't get the memo about that part. He was taking people out of the sky nonstop. He was melting tanks whenever he got them in their vision. And it's it's just that, that level of play that's coming through. I mean, he was so consistent. This should have been a Quadra, but Jared took been. his kill. How dare you, sir? Uh, and so you get a lot of moments like that. I mean, that, that's really the only downside was sometimes his team was there to maybe meme on him. I'm sure yeah. the tensions were high, <laughs> yeah. but that, that seemed to be the only thing thing that truly went wrong for I mean, Ganga. I mean, yeah, like, Chronix had several double kills. Uh, not double kills, sorry, triple kills in that case. Doing so, so well. In this case, though, we do have an interview ready to go with the two gentlemen from Kanga Esports. Let's throw it right down to this interview. Hey, guys. Great win there. In seven. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Great win there, gentlemen. I mean, a seven-game war with NIP. I wanted to kind of ask about momentum in that set because you had some pretty quick losses, some pretty quick wins. In, in the case of this set, is it easier to kind of like take that quick 4-0 and just kind of shrug that one off versus like losing bizarre after how close it was? Yeah, the f the first two wins really, or the first two losses were easy to shrug off because of how bad they were. Uh, we had a strat going in, it didn't work. Back to the drawing board, which is like on to the next game. I yeah. think yeah, you literally just hit next and then. You guys were kind of bouncing forth between a lot of different drafts. I mean, triple DPS, the first triple tank mirror match I think we've ever seen. Uh, do you guys feel like you've been struggling to find your identity, or do you think that kind of being this creative off-the-wall team is where you want to be? Yeah, we want, we want to be off the wall. We want to try to be the most flexible team, so we have a lot of drafts off our sleeves that we're trying out. Chronic certainly looked good, I think, uh, on a lot of his picks today. You look good on both Eevee and Maeve. If you could pick... One champion right now. I know there's a lot that's viable, Evil Eye. Where would you want to be, you know, game seven of the world finals? What's your most comfortable champion at the moment? Ah, oh, that's a hard one. I think it would have to be either, it has to be a blaster. It has to be either like Drogo's Willow or Eevee. I can't pick. It's one of those three. Joel, I know it's it's probably a little bit different without, um, you know, without Hates here kind of yeah. coaching <laughs> and moving things along. How has the team kind of felt for you guys? not having that presence there and having to shoulder a lot of the, you know, shot calling, coach work, you know, scrim stuff. Uh, yeah, I think it was a lot harder when Hayden uh, left, or Hades left. So we've all had to step up and do our mm. our own little part, help out in draft and in-game yeah. plans and stuff like that. Hey, who would you say is primarily driving drafts in-game and uh, shot calling and stuff like that? Probably uh, Jordy or Gera yeah. and uh, Osrana. Oh, we know him as Jordy. <laughs> yeah, Jordy. <laughs> Jordy. Yeah. Jordy shot Kala. I mean, it's a it's a great look for sure, guys. An, an absolute war. This one's probably got to feel pretty good. Where do you feel like you guys are standing right now? Yes, you're down, you know, fifth, sixth seed at the moment, but so is Virtus Pro. Both of you upset NIP. Where is the league kind of at right now? Yeah, I, I think we're on the upswing. We definitely had our lowest of the low at the beginning of this season, but I think we're starting to fi or finally figure out what we need to do to be a better team to get ready for Worlds. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, big congratulations. This is a huge win for you guys. Celebrate. You. Have a great time this weekend. That does it for us down here in the interview booth. We're going to get it back up to the desk to wrap up the day. Thank you, Nick, for tossing it back to us. A really amazing set for NIP versus Kanga. I'm really, really happy that those guys were able to clutch out that win. They did really well, and they worked really hard for it. Yeah, and honestly, at the end of the day, if, if you told anyone that NIP was going to be leaving this week 0-2, <laughs> Uh, no one would have believed you. In fact, you probably would have been yeah. smacked to make sure you were still sane yeah. just to make sure you were in, living in our reality. But no, they they have left. They've lost both sets this week. Yeah, they have indeed. We're going to take a look at the schedule right here. NIP Virtus Pro 4-1. Nottis Vizier. Kanga Esports 4-0. The next day, today, VP wins over Nottis Vizier 4-1. And Kanga taking it in a close set over NIP 4-3. So coming into this, we were saying, man, for Virtus Pro, for Kanga, this is going to be a hard week. you got to play NIP and Navi. Right. For NIP, it was a hard week. Oh. <laughs> so it turns out, I mean, anybody <laughs> yeah. who has to face Virtus Pro at this point, yeah. I think I'm more scared for you than I am for them. They are on mm. the upswing. I'd give them 
maybe title hottest team in Paladins right now because even though they are still technically down Ooh. there, now at fourth, fourth as yeah. they manage to upset a little bit of spacing there for SSG. Still five maps between them to, to make the big difference. But I, I think they are... They're looking like a first place team if they keep this up. Oh, for sure. NIP, not as Vincere, Team Envy, and now Virtus Pro in fourth seed. Top four teams right there. Everyone else, SSG, Kanga, PK, and Renegades in very last. But we've had some upsets this week. This week has been pretty cool. I'm so glad that I was able to get a chance to see this newly evolved VP really just blossom and then all of a sudden start taking down these Titans that you pretty much never see loose. Yeah, and now I mean, seeing NIP come in this phase with so far I what more wins than they've had or more losses than they had in the entire first phase and well we're only what five weeks in we still have several <laughs> yeah. to go so there's there's a lot that's left on the line first place isn't safe anymore so many more storylines to be had but that's all the games that is that we have for you guys today we won't have any broadcasting next week it is a bye week so we won't be here in time for that but that doesn't mean you guys can't stop playing paladins thank you all so much for watching us today Love you all. See you guys later. Respawn, the official gaming chair of the Paladins Premier League.